What's going on everyone? This is Bunny Muffins. I'm coming back with another three hour video compilation. Today we are going to be doing only astrals. So astrals have gotten a bit of a change in the recent patch. They changed how the astral loot tables work. They buffed a couple of the champions. So it went from B to A tier in just one patch. And I'm going to tell you guys this right now. You can force pretty much any comp to get to whatever rank you want. Uh, the only exception is maybe you can't force like a C tier comp to challenger, but you could probably get to Grandmaster with a C tier comp. So in this video, we're going to do six games from unranked all the way to diamond to start off. So we're going to do one game at each elo. So one in iron, one in bronze, all the way up to diamond. And along the way, I'm going to show you guys some of the mistakes that people are making at each and every one of these ratings and show you guys how to play the same exact comp every single game and also show you when to go for a comp like astrals so as you guys can see here we already have some ability power items we also have a bunch of the starting units for astral so this is a decent time to actually consider going for this so whatever rating you are if you want to learn how to climb in tft whether you are iron bronze gold whatever even up all the way through diamond this video is going to help you a lot in learning how to play this comp and also teaching you about all the tft fundamentals in general so we started off this game with the jeweled gauntlet slam we don't have astrals quite yet you normally want to play astrals when you can get them in at stage 2-1 and that is because you get a bunch of orbs after every player combat. Sorry, you just get one orb, but it gives a bunch of loot. And when I talked about loot tables at the start of this video, you might be wondering what I was referring to. Well, since we lost this fight here, we'll go ahead and check that out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into bunnymuffins.lol, and then I'm going to click on the meta snapshot, and then I'm going to scroll down and click on astral, wherever it may be, depending on the patch. So I'm going to click astral down here, and scroll down a little further, Mortdog, who is a game developer of TFT, he released what each astral orb gives based on how many astral units you have, based on their star levels. So we start off at three stars of astral units, and this is when you have star level ones of three different astral units, and this is what you would get. This is how you read the chart. Uh, you get a bunch of gold here. Here's their gold value. Here's the percentage of how often they drop. And then on this last column here, you have the expected gold value of that particular drop and then down here you have the average of the entire orb so if you have three stars of astral units the expected gold you can get is around one as you go up it gets a little higher this is if you have like three two star astral units and one one star unit that would add up to seven you'd get around three gold per orb and then as you get higher and higher you can see that the average gold level goes all the way up to 11 but keep in mind, it's worth much more gold than what we see here because some of the units you really want to improve your team with. For, so for example, if you're playing Lux Reroll, which is the comp we're going to be doing in this video, it's worth much more than two gold because you end up spending a lot more gold rolling for that particular unit. But yeah, you could get a bunch of cool stuff from the orbs. You could get item components. You could get uh, Aurelian souls from the orbs. It's pretty valuable. So uh, definitely do keep that in mind as we are playing the game. But right now we're in no orb city. We don't have Astrals yet, so we are missing either Nidalee or Lux or Varus at this point in the game. Uh, but we are in Iron, so the game is going to be a lot easier. In Iron, if you want to get out of that rating, you pretty much just have to keep practicing and keep playing the game to get a hang of what each and every one of the units do. Uh, it doesn't really matter what composition you play, doesn't really matter what champions you play. As long as you just get more familiar with the game, you will climb. It's just like how it works in pretty much every single game that's ever existed in the uh at least in my lifetime like the more you play it the better you will get at it and especially at this point there isn't anything specific that you have to do we're all good at something in life and whether that be playing guitar whether that be really good at school whether that be i don't know like doing math puzzles or like even a video game getting from like the lowest rank to the second lowest rank you really just have to put more time into that particular activity. Uh, same thing with TFT. So if you are stuck at this rating, that's really my main suggestion of what to do is pretty much just play more. And if you want to get all the way up to diamond, well, I'll be explaining how in each of the future games here, because again, we'll be playing one game at every single rank. Uh, but right now we want to focus on items. So we have a jeweled gauntlet already. That's an ability power item. The comp that we're going for or the team that we're building right now is going to be a Lux team. We call those compositions. And when you go for that, you want ability power items because she's kind of like a mage. So she casts a bunch of spells. So you want to get her like spell power or ability power up is what 
as they refer to in TFT. We also want to focus on some tank items because later on in the game, you always want to balance out tankiness and damage because you always need a bit of everything in order to succeed in life. And to do that, we'll need to play Silas, which is a really good unit in our team. Uh, there are a couple of different Astral builds out there. The one I'm going to be focusing on primarily in this video is going to be the 8 Astral build with the Lux reroll. It's pretty specific, but there are many other different versions. For example, on my website right now, we have a 5 Mage 3 Astral build, so it's a little different. You could do either or. Uh, it depends on what the meta is, it depends on what type of units you like, and it also depends on what units show up in your shop. There are a lot of different options here, but, but it just goes to show that you don't have to play exactly one specific team composition in order to do well in TFT. It's really just going to be dependent on the game, and sometimes that ends up being affected by your playstyle. So in, let's say, League of Legends, I know a lot of people who play TFT play League of Legends. Let's say you're a Garen main. Like, no one in the pro play plays Garen top lane, for example, but that doesn't mean he's a bad champion, right? Um, he just works in different ways at different levels. Same exact logic can be applied to TFT. Just because something doesn't work in pro play doesn't mean you can't climb with it. Uh, doesn't mean it's, like, bad. Like, what? how do you define bad? Well, that's definitions nowadays that are a little different for everyone, I would say. And, yeah, I guess how I would define it is, based on your rating, if it's just, like, statistically horrible... Okay, I'm using horrible to define bad, so that's a big no-no in a dictionary term. But I'm not a dictionary writer, so give me a break here, all right? Um, but, like, if it's not completely horrible statistically, I would say it would be considered not bad. But if it is, then yes, it would be bad. But I'm telling you, to get out of iron, uh, the mistakes that you make is... Uh, it, it's not going to be because you, like, didn't listen to the data or something like that. It's going to be something that is very crucial to the game that you're missing out on. So hopefully we cover that here. For example, the opponent we're playing right now, he's running a synergy called Dark Flights, and that is a pretty good synergy, but he's using it incorrectly. Uh, it essentially gives an item to each of his Dark Flight units after he sacrifices a unit. So you may have noticed he has two swords on his... Uh, on two characters right now, but you could actually build a full item on them instead. So that's just like another way people at this rating aren't really maximizing what they have on their board. So now onto the augments, we're on stage 3-2 right now. We had the selections of Mage Heart, Luden's Echo, or Celestial Blessing. If you're going mages, Luden's Echo and Mage Heart are probably two of the best things you can find. Uh, we're going to stick with Mage Heart here though, because the way this comp plays out, getting to five mages is really crucial because you get to play a unit that is called Zoe. Zoe is a legendary mage, and she is super, super, super strong, uh, but it's kind of awkward in this composition because you normally run three mages. The three mages are Lux and Vladimir because they're both astrals and mages, and since you're running astrals, well, you need the astral units, right? And then the other unit that we play that's a mage is Silas, and he's our main tank. But then after that, all the other mages are kind of lackluster except for Zoe. But if you play Zoe, you only have four mages. And as you guys can see on the left, mages are a 3, 5, 7, 9 synergy. And because of that, it's hard to get to five mages without this mage heart augment. Uh, so that's why we pick it up so we could play Zoe later on into the game. So in this next shop here, we get a Some, which isn't really that helpful. Uh, because we're not really going for a Som comp. So even though he is a dragon, even though he is a mage, he's not really anything that we need to worry about quite yet. So the way to play reroll Lux is you want to reroll your gold at level 6. You may see that a lot in a lot of my videos and guides on my website. I say like reroll at this level. So you might be wondering what that means. Well, if we take a moment and look at our experience right now on the bottom left, we're 18 out of 20 experience, which means that Every level or every round, we gain two experience. So next round will be level six, and we want to maximize the amount of gold we have at level six before we roll down for our uh, Lux three star because it's a reroll Lux build. We're gonna pick up the sword here because we want to build Infinity Edge on our Lux. I'll explain why after we finish the instructions on how to reroll. So in order to reroll, you need a lot of gold because you're essentially refreshing your shop, which is like another way of saying rolling, in order to find as many copies of Lux as you can. 
And right now we're picking up all the Astral units. So we're picking up Varus, we're picking up Lux, we're picking up Nidalee. And essentially you just need a lot of gold to get to that point in the game. And until you do that, you want to do what's called econing, which is just generating as much gold as possible. So normally a lot of people would level up to level six at stage three, two. We leveled up to level six at stage three, five, because we wanted to earn interest on all of our gold. And in order to do that, well, we just need to kind of uh, save up our gold more in order to make the interest threshold. So every time you have 10 gold, you get one bonus gold at the end of the round. And that's just called making interest. The one caveat is that there's a cap on how much you could get per, per turn, and that is five gold per turn. So it is theoretically optimal to have around like 50 gold if you want to maximize your gold generation. And that's where rerolling comes in now. So we saved up as much gold as we could. We got to level six and now we do what's called re-rolling. We're going to roll down our shop until we hit 50 gold every single turn. And that allows us to get as many copies of Lux as we can because she is a two cost unit and level six is just the most optimal point in the game to find her. And again, this information is all available on my website. You can go up to the top and click on, I believe it is under leveling and then you scroll all the way to the bottom this shows the champion roll odds, which essentially just means how often a champion is likely to show up in each champion slot. So in the game, each one of these slots would have like this chance of showing whatever cost unit based on whatever level you're at. But level six is the best time to do it for two cost units. You could check in the bottom left of the screen as well. It, has, it shows like 25%, 40%, 30%, 5%, 0% right now. And two cost units are at that 40% threshold. And this is just where it's the highest right now for finding this unit. So that's why you want to roll a lot on this level. If you're doing a one cost reroll, you would roll at level five. If you're doing a three cost reroll, you'd roll at level seven. And if you're playing standard, if you're going for like four or five cost carries, you generally want to roll at level eight. So now we have a bunch of copies of Lux. We're on the next neutral round and we're at around 50 health if you look on the right hand side. So that's not like the most amount of health. That's actually pretty low, but sometimes being low health isn't the end of the world, especially when we're doing this composition because we did not expect to win a lot of the early rounds because we don't have our comp set up quite yet and we're not quite playing for win streaks. We're playing for a very specific build, which is the Astral build, and that just means we don't have the luxury of win streaking unless we get really lucky. And in this game, we did not get really lucky. We're having like, I'd say around like average outcome of what to expect from an Astral team. At this point in the game, it's like you just got your Lux online. She's not three starred yet. And, you know, sometimes that happens. You don't always get the three star right away. Um, so I'd say this is like an expected outcome in your game. So this isn't some like crazy, super lucky game that you're seeing here. Like I'm hoping that the games I'm going to show you are like games that are are games that you can relate to that uh, you that also show up in your games as well. So we picked up the portable forge. All the other items weren't really quite tickling my fancy. Mana Zane is good, but it's not that good in a mage comp. So it might seem counterintuitive. This is one of the things that I think Riot didn't do a good job on, unless they fixed it without me knowing. But mages cast twice. Uh, we're also going to roll down a bit here while I talk, and we're just picking up Varus's, Nidalee, Lux's, Silas's, uh, Skarner's, and Vladimir's. Or we already have Vladimir, so we don't need Vladimir there. Uh, but mages, they have a mana lock because they cast twice. So the mage trait, it just allows your unit to cast twice, which is really good, right? But as they're doing the cast animation, they don't really gain mana. So I'm pretty sure you don't get the full value from mana zane because mana zane gives you a bunch of mana after you cast your first spell. So instead, I'm going to grab the Blitzcrank hook item, which is a pretty decent tank item. So we did need a tank item on Silas. And yeah, we'll just settle with that for now. Again, you could argue that we should take the Blitzcrank item anyways, even if Mana Zane did work on Lux, because we don't have many tank items. We have two damage items, and we have one tank item in the Ionic Spark, but Ionic Spark is more of like a semi-tank item. It's not like a full-on tank item, because it does both damage and gives like a tiny bit of tankiness. It's more of like a support tanky item, rather than like a full dedicated one, because it reduces magic resistance of nearby enemies, which obviously is really useful if you're running a magic damage team, which we are in this case. So definitely getting the tank item, we needed one anyway, so I don't really feel too bad about that 
portable forge option. Uh, right now, our Lux is not hitting that hard. The reason is because, well, she's just not three-starred yet, so hopefully we can get her soon. We have six copies of Lux right now. We need to get nine of her in order to get her to three-star Lux or level three Lux. And each time you upgrade your Astral units, as you saw in the chart before, you get improved Astral orbs. So this carousel is super important because we get the Zoe. Remember I was talking about her before, and our team just got infinitely better once we can put her in. So I know we want to reroll for Lux at level 6, but getting in 5 mages plus Zoe is just so important that I'm just going to level up and drop her in right now, and then we'll finish looking for the Luxes at this level. Notice how the odds for her change from 40% down to 30%. And yeah, it does lower the odds a bit, but Zoe is just that good, so that's why in this specific situation, I'm going to be breaking the rules a little bit. Normally, you would only level up after you get Lux 3-starred, um, but again, each game plays out a little differently. Hopefully, by watching six games of the same comp, you guys will understand all the nuances to the build, and that's what's really important in order to actually improve, because everyone can just read a guide. So let's say all your opponents are reading the same guide, everyone's going to be generally at the same skill level. But if you really look at a comp and really master it beyond what's written in a guide, you're gonna be exponentially better than them and that would theoretically make you climb faster than all your opponents. Uh, so that's why it's important to play multiple games of the same comp, just to practice. Uh, but you could also try doing different ones too. You don't have to do the same one every time, but just eventually, if you really want to learn a comp like full from like front to back, then that's what I would recommend. Uh, this person's going for a set reroll. He's got three star set and Senna, and he also has a two star Zaya. That's actually a pretty powerful team at this point in the game. That's actually not so. We end up losing this round, which is fine. It's okay to lose rounds in TFT. A lot of people think like, oh, you lost a round. Like, that's always bad. Like, obviously, I'd prefer winning the round, but it's not the end of the world if you don't. Okay, so we get a bunch of good items here. So what we're looking for on this treasure dragon, since we could reroll it a bunch, is we need one last Lux item, which would be a mana item, and we also need a tank item for Silas. So Zeke's, double Zeke's is all right in most cases, but not when we're a mage build. But at the same time, you don't want to spend too much money rolling down on the treasure dragon because I have not found Lux three star yet. So uh, I got half my gold done. I was able to get blue buff for Lux, which is her third item or which is a possible third item. I prefer Spear of Shojin, but you know, it is what it is. You can't get perfect things in TFT. Um, so I guess the double Zeke's, it isn't like horrible, but it's definitely not ideal. Uh, one thing to note, I do get to build the Static Shiv, and Static Shiv does benefit from increased attack speed. Uh, so it's not like the end of the world, even though it's not anything to be that excited about. Uh, treasure Dragon's always a little tricky. Obviously, it's really easy when there's a very good Treasure Dragon. Oh, this guy's going Lux reroll as well. Unlucky. But sometimes the Treasure Dragon... How does he have more Luxes than me when he's level 8? That means he just got them without rolling. Okay, sorry about that. I'm just like raging a little bit from watching this replay because we're doing the same thing, but he has more of the units even though he didn't roll for them, so he just hit them all naturally. Um, but back to the... Uh, Back to the earlier point, you don't want to waste too much gold on the treasure dragon. So what a lot of people do, especially if you watch like a lot of high level players, they always take something that's like not too horrible. So if it accomplishes like some of the goals that they're trying to look for, which in this case was I needed one tank item and one Lux items, sometimes they just take it so they don't have to worry about it so they don't waste like five or ten gold looking for like the perfect items because there's a lot of randomness in some of the shops so uh, sometimes you get lucky sometimes you don't it's literally like playing roulette uh, they did ban gambling on twitch recently but you know tft still exists so i guess that's a nice little loophole there for people who are into that i guess damn it actually is kind of like gambling i did not think about that until i made this connection while making this video but, okay, let's go back to the game because that is a topic for a different day. With Zeke's Herald, I should be placing my Varus right next to my Zoe. I'll be honest, as I was playing these games, I may have been semi-AFK. We're skipping over the parts where I'm not doing anything, but in a lot of cases, like, when a round starts, I'm kind of just not doing anything at all because I was probably doing something on my second monitor. 
And the reason behind that is because when I am in lower ratings, I am not like playing at my fullest. I'm not fully paying attention because I kind of know I'm going to win from the start. Um, so that is one thing to keep in mind. But that's why I'm doing a lot of video reviews now because you just learn a lot more and you could see a lot more from doing that because you can pause, you can fast forward, you can rewind all the boring parts. And it's just a much better way to kind of look at TFT in my opinion. Uh, so we have a bunch of items we could choose from here. Spear of Shojin would be nice. A tank item would be nice. I think we're going to... Oh, someone took the tank item. So that's why I'm moving back and forth. So I guess we just settle with the Spear of Shojin. We really need that third Silas item because Silas is our main tank. And he's not really that tanky compared to other tanks. He's a three cost unit. So a lot of other people... Or sorry, a lot of other teams, they have a four cost tank. So they end up ha being a lot stronger than my guy. So it's a bit of an awkward situation. I do sell that Nidalee there because Varus three star is much more important than Nidalee three star. I do end up picking him up here. I'm probably just gonna... Yeah, item remove. Oh, I did it too late. You cannot item remove during a round, but you could do it uh, when you're preparing for it. So I'm just gonna have to wait until after this round finishes to switch the static shiv onto my Varus. I probably should have put it on him at the start, but remember before I picked up the Zoe from Carousel, so she had the tier already on her. That's why I couldn't put the item on the Varus right away. Uh, let's sell that extra Nidalee to get up to 40 gold because I don't really think we need this Nidalee later on. As for the one cost units, the ones you want a three star, it's just really any one you could hit without having to roll too much. They're not really your main goals. So even though you do improve your astral orbs by leveling up your characters, it's not really that necessary to do. Actually, maybe I put double Zeke's on Varus. Uh, it's tough to say. If I had to change this in hindsight, I'd probably put the Spear of Shojin on the Zoe, the Static Ship on the Zoe, and double Zeke's the Varus. That's probably what I would have done instead. Um, what was I saying before? Okay, so the units you want a three star Generally, you, obviously, if you get all units to three star, that would be perfect, but that doesn't always happen every game. I'd say the ones that are most important are really just Lux. You don't really need anyone else, so if you ever come into a game where a lot of Nidalees are taking up a lot of space on your bench, a lot of Vladimirs are taking up a lot of space on your bench, a lot of Skarners are doing the same thing, you could end up just selling them and just giving up on them if you don't have a lot of copies of them. I know we were one off Nidalee three star, but you also have to remember at this point in the game, the shop odds for one cost units is very low. It's at 19%, which is much lower than everything else we've encountered or that we've talked about so far in the game. So it's just like something that's not that possible. And getting a Varus three star is much more important and much more impactful than a Nidalee three star because Varus is a three cost unit. Nidalee's a one cost unit. Same with Silas. Silas is three cost as well. So getting them upgraded to three stars is just going to do a lot more for your team. Uh, so we're going to scout around a little bit just to see what happens. And yeah, there's not too much we have to change about our positioning. I like keeping Silas in the middle because he has aura items. So when he's in the middle, it kind of protects him so he lives slightly longer. But our team is honestly really, really squishy. So our front line is Vladimir and Skarner. They're not the best tanks in the game just because they're really cheap units. So they don't really buy that much time for our Silas. Though this game, our Vladimir did live almost to the end. I guess that's not, not too bad. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is leveling. So we are level 7 right now. The last upgrade we need for our team is Zoe 2-star. Uh, I just realized we still don't have Lux 3-star. What I'm actually doing now is I was waiting for the other Astral player to die, but he just hasn't died yet, and he has all the Luxes. In case you guys didn't know, each champion has a limited number of copies of them in the game. So, so whenever someone takes one of the champions, there's a lower chance of getting that same champion in one of your shops. So if we look back at my website again, you see the number of units of each cost over here. So for two costs, there are 22 units, which means the other person has nine copies of Lux. And right now I have seven of them. So in total, nine plus seven is 16. So there are six Luxes left in the pool, but that's not that many, but it's still possible to hit and I still could hit them from the Astral Orbs. It's just a little difficult. But as you guys can see here in this Iron game, um, I know some of you guys are watching this even though you are not in Iron. You could get away with not fully upgrading your team because people don't have like optimized boards at this rating. 
And even the guy with the three star Lux who hit it very early with the Aurelian Soul. And this person's level nine now too. I just hit level eight just now. Um, we're still able to beat his team just because we have good augments, we have Zoe, and we're just have decent items on our Lux as well. Um, again, it just goes to show that like, even if you're not hitting, it's not really an excuse to not climb. That's one thing to keep in mind here. Uh, we're gonna go for probably this mage spatula. Unfortunately, our Varus already is full item, but we could put this mage cap on our Aurelian soul instead, which is that big dragon on the bottom right. So somehow we have to find room to level up and then drop that item onto him. Okay, so we got a rod and a, um, what's it called? A chain vest, so we could build a locket there. Uh, I guess we could just locket our Aurelian soul. It doesn't really matter. I guess it's better on Vladimir because the way Locket of the Iron Solari works is that it gives a shield based on your star level. And the higher star level unit that's holding it, the more shielding that you get. So it is technically better on a three cost unit than a one cost unit. But you could argue that we should put it on Aurelian Soul anyways because it gives ability power. And Aurelian Soul is just a much better unit than, than Vladimir because, I mean, it's a giant dragon versus a one cost unit. So. Uh, not too difficult to discern there, um, but hopefully once this 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 other astral guy just died, we should be able to hit our luxes now. So we're gonna probably roll down here. It's only twenty percent chance to get lux now, but it is pretty important to hit. Maybe we get Aurelian Soul two star instead, in which case we sell our lux to put the items on Aurelian Soul. That's a common thing to do when playing this composition, uh, so always keep that in mind. We'll definitely be going over that in more advanced ways in the later games in this video, so definitely stick around for those. Uh, okay, let's see what's happening here. This is 3-star Olaf, 3-star Diana, and we died. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, we're gonna take a lot of damage here. If we do end up hitting, we definitely have a chance. Okay, we hit Aurelian Soul 2, that's one more Lux. Ah, do we even need this Lux? So. We're going to put in 8 Astral now, so we're going to level up and drop in this Nidalee. There's a big difference between 5 and 8 Astral. I believe it's 50 ability power. So we didn't end up hitting Lux 3 this game, even though that was our sole purpose from the start. But we have this Aurelian Soul with Mage Cap, and we're just going to Jeweled Gauntlet Infinity Edge him here. And then this blue buff could really go on anyone. I'm going to drop it on Zoe because her casts are very important. This IE doesn't really matter who it's on there. And... You guys will see the big difference in power that we get now that we have an actual carry. So again, in this game, I'm going to pause the fight right now just to explain. We did not hit Lux 3, even though we dedicated our entire game to doing it. And at lower elos, that should not stop you from not climbing if you like know what you're doing. Obviously, that takes time for every person. Like Some people are going to get it right away. Some people are going to take a little longer to figure out. Always go at your own pace. It's a video game at the end of the day. Um, but again, like, even if the stupidest things happen, you don't hit anything, all your opponents are hitting stuff, um, it really shouldn't stop you from climbing because there's always something you could have done differently to make your team, like, just a little bit stronger. And we do end up losing there, so a little unlucky we get second place, but hey, not bad. We still get a lot of LP for that. And, and despite everything that I talked about that was like kind of stopping us, we, I know a lot of players, if they're in that situation where they don't hit the three star unit that they've been rolling for all game, they go like seventh or eighth, but in lower ratings, it really shouldn't stop you from finishing high up as long as you have all the basics down. But let's hop into the next game and hopefully like you can relate to a lot of these games because a lot of people, they like showing like only the games they do really well in but you can't really copy those games because those are like one in a hundred games or one in a thousand games. So hopefully this game and the next six games, you can definitely relate to and use them to get better at TFT. But let's go on into game number two. So let's hop into game number two. We have a double belt start with a bit of gold after the first minion rounds. And our first shop, we have a couple of astral units. So that's looking pretty good so far. Let's drop the Skarner and the Nilies in right now. And then we magically hit a Skarner two. We have a glove, so we're probably slamming a war mogs right away and we get the lux there so we're gonna go ahead and probably start off with the astrals you don't need to put in astrals during the neutral rounds because they only give loot after a player versus player round so no worries if you don't get three astral right away but whenever you get the three astral start it's worth exploring i'm not saying do it every time 
but you could always pivot out of it as well. So Shimmer Scale Soul, while it is fun, this is an astral video, so I'm obviously not taking that. Lucky Gloves, I do have one Thieves Gloves, or sorry, I do have one Brawler's Glove, so I could do that, but Living Forge is just very consistent. Uh, you could also reroll, but I'd say either Living Forge or Lucky Gloves are your picks here. We went ahead and grabbed the Living Forge. We have another Lux in our shop. Randuins, okay, that's a little awkward to position, but it's not the end of the world. I was a bit slow, so I could have leveled up here and put an extra unit in, but it's not like the end of the world that we didn't. But yeah, Warmogs for sure. Warmogs does luckily work really well with Randuin Sanctum because whenever you have a lot of health, you want a lot of armor and magic resistance to complement them. And it just gives you the most effective HP if you combine the two. A lot of people, they only stack armor, they only stack magic resist, or they only stack health. Like they go for some triple Warmogs item build. And it's just not that effective because you don't get a lot of effective HP is what it's called. Um, whereas if you mix the two, you mix health and resistances, that's how you get the most out of the game. So we pre-leveled a little bit because again, I was slow leveling up because I took too long thinking about my augment. So we level up during the round and then we drop an extra unit in here. The pre-level did probably help us hit the Varus because we do have a higher chance of hitting higher cost units. Uh, so that is another thing to keep in mind as well. This person, he's got a Nunu with Sunfire. We should be able to win this. The Randuins is doing a lot of work, makes our units real tanky, and we're able to finish them off right there. He has a lot of items, not sure what he's saving them for. Okay, another Astral Orb. We just got a couple of bit of gold. Always look at the loot tables for astrals to know which ones to or what you want to put in and what to expect from the from the orbs we're almost at 10 gold so you want to keep that in mind i did buy the talia but if we lose this round of course we would sell the talia to get up back up to 10 gold this person's running cruel pack they changed this augment recently so it is a bit different than it was before in the previous set uh, but again you do want the talia in case you need mages because if you get a vladimir you definitely want three mages three mage is so much better than zero mage on the mage units because you drop down to i believe 75 percent ability power but you cast twice so it's essentially or effectively 150 percent ability power because 75 times two is 150 versus the 100 that you normally get but we lose this round so we'll sell the talia see what we want here so we have a glove so we could go for the jeweled gauntlet infinity edge build unfortunately we are last place right now not last place last pick right now and we are tied at 98 hp with someone else so we just lost the dice roll it's random for uh, tiebreakers but we can go for either a jeweled gauntlet or infinity edge we don't get either of them so i guess we could go for a defensive item or just get more gold from the bow nope we can't get that either I guess we get the, the Negatron Cloak. So the reason why you want bow there, it's not because you need a bow item. It's because I just wanted more gold. And because I didn't really need a Negatron or an armor, because I already have four tank items, technically, from the two from the Randuins, two from the Warmogs. Uh, if you count the components, it's like you don't need that many more defensive items. And I also like Negatron over the Chain Vest because Negatron can build Ionic Spark, which is really good for any sort of mage comp. So we picked up the Vladimir, we put in the five Astrals, we only have two out of three mages, so we do want to fix that later on. But for now it's fine because one, we didn't get any mages, and two, five Astral does give a bunch of AP, so it's not like the worst thing in the world. This person's running Ezreal carry. Can our Lux do it? We did get a Lux too. I will admit, this game we did get a lot of our Astral units. But again, I only go Astrals if we hit a lot of them at the start. And that's kind of one of the examples here. A lot of people, they're like, oh, how do you make this comp work? Whenever I go for it, I don't hit the units or something like that. But the reality is, each game you're able to hit something different every single time. And you just have to figure out when to go for a comp and when not to go for a comp. We hit a Skarner 2 really early with tank items and we had the other extra astral units so it was kind of a no-brainer for us nothing really much to buy in this shop so we'll skip to the fight this person's going assassins I i'm really looking forward to seeing what people come up with with some of the assassin builds later on uh, because rengar was one of my favorite units in in previous sets in set one i loved wild assassins that was just a fun comp for me 
Uh, Nidalee is in this set as well, but she's a little different. She's an astral, not a wild. And maybe with Dark Flights, they need to fix... Hmm, I shouldn't say fix, but something needs to be done about like the item strength from being duplicated from the Dark Flight trait. But we'll, we'll see what the TFT team comes up with. Uh, again, we're always fighting against the demons and mort dogs, and we have to hope that we have his good graces on our side whenever we play this game. More defensive items. We get another belt. Okay, so this is going to be a great example for you guys. What happens if you don't get any offensive items? Well, hopefully we will be able to answer that this game. Fun fact, you're not supposed to win every single game. Uh, it's just TFT in a nutshell. Like, look at this. If we want attack damage comp, we would have no items. If we want ability power comps, which we're doing now, we would also have no items for them. Which just means we just have to kind of get a little fortunate on maybe the next carousel or maybe the wolf camp. We only need to be fortunate there because we got unlucky because we got a billion tank items. It's a risk you take whenever you go for a defensive item start on the carousel, which I do prefer because defensive items, they allow you to flex into a bunch of different compositions because every team would want at least one tank item. And sometimes this happens, you know, it's one of the risks. But let's see how we do here. This person's also going mages. He's got Ludens Prismatic, which is obviously a lot better than my augment because Ludens on mages is the best thing you could ever get. And we will lose this one accordingly, which is fine. You know, we're going to level up next turn, get to three mages, put in the Silas. It gives us three mage and two bruiser. Late game specialist, well, good. We're not going to level nine on this comp, so I'm not probably not going to grab that. I want to reroll for Lux to three star. So it's probably Thrill the Hunt or reroll. Thrill, I'd say, is like doable, you know? It's not the best thing. It's not the worst thing. It's just highly mediocre. So we go ahead and select that. Let's check out our shop. Namzi is a mage. But it's a little difficult to fit right now. If we put in the Namzi, it'll be hard to fit in the five Astral. And I do want to get those Astral Orbs for the economy. Economy is very important whenever you reroll. It's more important than when you're doing like standard leveling, for example. Because when you do like standard leveling, uh, sometimes you play for like a win streak or something like that. You have a lot of health. But when you play reroll, you generally don't have that much health. So you really need a lot of gold to get, uh, get you to like three star units or whatever, right? So that's why gold is just so much more important whenever you play reroll. Again, the main strength of your team is being able to hit three stars of your carries. And the only way to do that is by having a lot of gold, or I should say the best way to increase the chances of that happening is by having a lot of gold. So we leveled up to level six. We're not gonna level up any further. We're gonna slow roll a little bit at this point for Lux three. Oh, this, this person's got Deja, but his Rage Blade is on Yasuo, not Yasuo, Yone. This Garner is pretty tanky. You do have to watch out with Randu and Sanctum. Notice how we're grouped up and we're getting hit by the AoE spell of Deja. Later in the game, you want to definitely not maximize the value of that item and kind of dodge around people, you know? Not dodge around, but spread out a little bit and only put it on units you actually need the resistance on. But in the early game, I find that there's less AoE, so you don't need to be too concerned, but that person obviously did hit an early Deja. So what item do we want here? We want a rod, no rods. Uh, this is rough. I, I guess we grab a bow. Maybe we could get a giant slayer later on. It, it's really, let's look at the choices we had again. Would I pick anything different? You could go for another defensive item, but we just don't really need it. Maybe I should have gone the other glove. Yeah, second glove would have been better than the bow. Uh, than the bow. Yeah, for sure. You would get the second glove and then pray for... What's it called? Jeweled Gauntlet Infinity Edge. It's just no tears, no rods. It's a little unfortunate, but maybe we get lucky with our units. So we're rolling down a little bit. Probably not playing Sohm because he's not an Astral. There's Vlad too, very good. It's always good to upgrade your Astral units because the more stars you have on your Astral units, the better loot you get from the Astral Orb. So that's always something to keep in mind. Uh, we could probably ZZ Rot or something here. Uh, let's see. I guess we could have Sunfire Caped as well. That would have been fine too. 
Both both items are fine. Okay. The assassins are destroying our back line. We're doing like zero damage to them, but they're kind of doing zero damage to us as well. Skarner is super tanky with this. It's actually hilarious. Wow. We actually won. I don't know how my Skarner tanks so much. Oh wait, no, Skarner didn't cast there, so maybe we lose. Oh no, Vladimir's too strong. Double cast in in overtime. Orb got us Vlad and Nidalee, so we don't really have too many copies of them, but maybe we can make it work. We get another Vlad there, we roll down a bit more. And nothing we really want here. Okay, no Luxes. Unlucky. We rolled a lot of rounds without hitting any... Oh, wow. Another person's going Astral. Maybe that's why he has High Roller, so maybe that could help him out a bit. So there's one Mage player and another Astral player, so we are being contested this game. Doesn't mean it's the end of the world, but it, it doesn't help, you know? He has one more loaded dice left as well. And yeah, this Vlad 3 is definitely going to finish us off. So now we have to think, do we want to stick to this or do we want to switch out of it? We are higher health than him, so we could wait for him to die first. But whether that actually happens, he's not that low. He's at like 50 some health. We're at 68. Ooh, Vlad and Italy. And Anima Visage. Okay, we'll drop that on, I guess, Silas. It's fine. You want it? Nah, maybe I should have put it on Skarner. Yeah, 100% I should have put it on Skarner. Another belt. Okay, we did get a tier this time. And a chain vest. Oh my god, way too many... Way too many defensive items. Yeah, we should have put the Anima Visage on, on Skarner for sure. Because it just works better the more health you have, so that's a small mistake I made there. I could always sell the Skarner and then put the Warmogs onto Silas. Ideally, if I had an item remover, I'd want the ZZ Rot on the Skarner. But the way this game played out, it was just a little... How do I say? Uh, like, the timing was a little off. This person has the Namzi. That it did a lot of damage. Okay, so we could pick up Lux there. We finally hit another one. But it is very late. So we lose here. So I'm not expecting like that much from this game, but you know, we are in bronze, so anything can happen, right? Okay, so essence theft probably is what we want, but we could also reroll. The reason why I'm not automatically taking essence theft is because I'm only running three mages, so it's not like that great. Ooh, maybe component grab bag so we could get some items. That's probably what we're doing here. Better together would have been interesting because we have the Randuin Sanctum. Okay, we finally got offensive items, so that's really good. There's a Vladimir there. There's more Vladimirs. That's Vlad 3. And then Sunfire, Anima Visage, and okay, ZZ on the Vlad. That's good. What offensive items do we want? Archangels? Or do we want Jeweled Gauntlet and Ice Cream? It's really close. I would say I'd be fine with either or. I guess Ionic Spark's pretty good too, but... Hmm. Maybe I should have built Ice Cream plus Drooled Gauntlet. I think that might have been better. The thing is, our team's so tanky, so Archangels has a little bit more value because the fights will last a bit longer, so maybe Archangels is, is what we want. Normally, I wouldn't mind a Hand of Justice, but the thing is we already have healing from Thrill to Hunt, so we don't really need the extra healing from... What's it called? From Hand of Justice as well. Okay, we lose this round, but not the end of the world. New shop, we get a Varus, and then we'll pick up the orb and roll a little bit more. Ah, oh, man, where are the Luxes? Okay, we finally hit them. Oh, and another Varus. Oh no, I did not pick up the orb, so I don't know how much gold I'm getting from that. It's a Deja player again. He has two Rage Blades and a Mirage Crest. But at least we have... Vlad 3 is like... Decently tanky with that. I probably want my Skarner up a bit more. The positioning again is weird with Randuin's Sanctum. I feel like it's really good early game. The later it goes on, it's kind of hard because your positioning gets a little bit trickier. 
I think we're able to finish them off. I think the healing from Spirit Visage and Dragon Claw was just too much. Okay, Zoe would be interesting. We have a, a glove, so we ideally would want the rod on Lux, especially. I doubt we are going to get that, because there are a couple other mage players this game. But if we do that, yeah, no chance. Ah, there's just no item for this. I guess another glove, and I don't know. I ended up going for the chain vest, but really all those items, it didn't really matter which one you picked. Or sorry, I was thinking glove, maybe just because it was more gold. Uh, so we did end up getting gold there, so we missed out on the other Varus. So a little unlucky there because I was AFK. Uh, another Varus, rolling down. Silas, maybe we could get Silas 3. Silas is always the main tank. Level 6 is just really good for this comp, assuming you have no emblems or augments that increase traits because you just fit in every synergy you need. This person's also running Randuin Sanctum, but his is from a uh, regular forge. So the thing to keep in mind with Living Forge is that you get a new item every 10 rounds. So that happens at the start of the game, I believe at 3-7 or 3-6, and then the next time is at 5-6. So it's a bit of time before we get our third item. It's really only useful if you make it to the actual late game. But if you do make it there, obviously you have a much stronger power spike than most people. Uh, definitely not a win streak augment because other prismatics are just, they give more power than, than Living Forge because they don't keep giving you stuff later on. Obviously it's not bad for win streaking, it's just not the best one. So we have a couple of Nidalees, so I guess I'll buy that. I, I'm not sure yet whether I should pick up the orb first or roll. Because I don't think it affects the pool, what's in the orb. I mean, it does affect the pool, but like it already like counts for it. So I don't think the ordering really matters. The other Lux player doesn't have Lux 3 either. I forgot to pick it up again. Uh, yeah, I guess don't play when you're semi-AFK. That would, that would help a bit too. Oh, this Olaf went directly to my guy. So from the Astral Orb, we got a another, what's it called, glove. So I guess we could build Thieves Gloves if we get nothing else, but we really need <sighs> just one more offensive item. It's it's not hard, right? Are we able to kill this Olaf? I don't think so. He's too stacked up, even with the anti-heal. Oh wait, maybe we can. Nice. So you could settle on the Giant Slayer. It's not bad, right? Are there better items though? Probably. I like the blue buff, but I don't like the rapid fire cannon. Trojan's good. I guess this is takeable. I would take this, yeah. Even if I don't end up taking it, I, I think this is takeable. Arguably, the first one we saw was takeable as well. Yeah, Shojin's just pretty good, right? So, do we give up on, okay, yeah, give up on Varus. Maybe we could get the Nidalee, because we could always get Varus later. Of course, we see another one. Unlucky. We're rolling down a bit more. No Luxes. Okay, there's finally one. I guess we... Yeah, we could give up on Silas. Maybe we should sell the Skarner on our board, put the new Skarner in. That's probably what I would have done in hindsight. We see another Varus. And it's late in the game now, so we definitely want to roll down a lot um, to hit the Lux too. I guess we build Titans or Seconds Easy Rod. We could build maybe a Thieves Glove or a Trap Claw. Both would have been fine. Maybe if I were to do this again, I would double ZZ Rod, I think. Yeah, I think double ZZ Rod's better than, than Titans because uh, Titans you want on a unit that doesn't die. I should have probably put the Titans onto the Silas. I was a little greedy here because I'm thinking... We're going to get a third item from Living Forge, but I shouldn't play around that quite yet because I'm not really playing for first place this game because we didn't have like that great of items. So it's going to be, a, and we also don't have three star Lux yet. So we probably wanted to play for like a lower placement. I skipped a Varus there. I know that's just because I'm rolling too quickly because I really just care about Lux right now. 
Varus doesn't have any items, so that's why I don't really care about him that much. Like, obviously, if I get him, great. But whenever you have no items, you don't really care if you three-star the unit or not. Whereas our Lux has <laughs> three of our items and just is sitting there doing nothing. Okay, this person's got Yasuo. Uh-oh. Like, our Lux is tickling. She can't even kill a one-star Twitch. Which is really bad. At least our tanks are very tanky, because that buys us a lot of time for Archangels to stack up. Is it enough, though? It does, does not look like it. But once we get our three-star, you guys can see, or would be able to imagine, that the comp does get a lot more powerful. Yeah, not enough for this guy. I wonder if we would have won that if Yasuo doesn't have that 1v1 ultimate. Okay, I guess we could roll down to 10 gold. Yeah, let's drop the Thieves Gloves onto Varus because he's just a better unit than Nidalee. At this point, what you should do is scout to see what health the other Astral player is and then use that to decide if you should roll or not, but I made the mistake and I didn't check. If they are like one and a half lives or less, I feel like you should save and just wait it out two more rounds. It's tough to say because we're only one off. Okay, we got assassinated. But I think our tanks... Okay, nice. The Mana Reeve onto the Rengar is really good because it makes it so he doesn't jump around. Ooh, I just realized ZZ Rod's really good against Rengar as well because ZZ Rod, the spawn thing, I don't think it has much armor so it doesn't... So it targets that unit instead of the your carries, or for example. Right, so what do we want here? Mage Cap would have been great on on Varus. But that's probably going to be taken because there are a couple of mage players. I guess we get a third tank item. We could do Fimble Winter, or we could do Gargoyle Stoneplate. Yeah, I guess it's just Fimble Winter. All the other stuff we don't really care about. We have a couple of slots open. We don't have to put the Fimble Winter onto the Silas. We could put it onto Vladimir as well and wait for the portable forge item. At this point, I'm hoping to not even complete the Lux 3 until after I see the item, because maybe I could pop an item off on the Lux if it's a good Orn item for her. We get a Trap Claw, that's nice. And I guess we roll a little bit still, roll down to 10 again. Nope, nothing. Unfortunate. If you're playing for the now, you put it on Silas. If you're playing for the later, then you put it on Vladimir. Yeah, I should I should just trap claw. Yeah. I know I played it late, but it is what it is. Uh, man, we're doing zero. Our Lux has hit the Deja like so many times, but it just does zero damage to him. She just doesn't do much. We have the Archangels now. Okay, nice. You just have to, like, this is a very low damage build, because one, we have Spear of Shojin, two, we have Hand of Justice, so it's like, one item doesn't amplify the damage, it just makes her cast faster, the other one, it's like, half a damage item, it's not really a real one. This is a bit of a weird positioning, we kind of want the three tanks to split tanking, because I have Vladimir who heals himself, Silas has a healing item, and... Skarner has a healing item, so we kind of want to spread them out a little bit, but with the Randuins, it's hard to do that, so it's a little bit awkward. I would have preferred just having, like, non-healing tank items in that case. Because whenever you have healing, you want to spread them out so that you get a little bit more value out of them. Our Silas got demolished there. I don't think we're winning this one. I think we got hit by like every AoE in the world. Okay. Not horrible. We're at 28 life. Everyone else, there are like three people lower than us right now. Another of those. Ah. Mana Zane. Okay, that would be good on Varus. That's about it. But this is just really unlucky. Like, <laughs> 
What are we supposed to do with these these things? I guess we roll for Lux. It is a very late Lux 3, don't get me wrong. Finally, at stage 6-1, we're able to hit Lux 3. You know, despite having such a great start for Astrals, as you guys can see, sometimes you just don't hit. And that's the risk you run whenever you play TFT. Yeah, I guess Trap Claw on Vlad. We can have him buff up random people. And then hopefully with the Astral buff, we maybe get another item component. We could drop that onto Jace. And kind of call it a day from there. At least we three-starred everyone, so we're going to get really good loot boxes. Whenever you have 15 plus, it's generally really good. That Rengar is really scary. I wonder why he doesn't put Last Whisper on his Rengar, though. Instead, he opts to get the random Dark Flight item. In Dark Flight, on your carry, you definitely want three items. You don't need to maximize the Dark Flight bonus on them. Because the three items are just more important. We get a QSS. I guess we put that on Jace. There's not much else to do there. This is a three-star Namzi player. For some reason, there's a random Braum 3 as well. Oh, Heimerdinger's stunning. Oh my god. Heimerdinger almost killed my luck single-handedly. That's crazy. That's with no items. Okay, we're kind of lucky we won this one. I don't know how our Lux lived, actually. We got a lot of gold. And now we just wait. We want to level up to level 8. Remember how we had a lot of good synergies at level 6? Well, at level 7, we don't really get that much more. So we're really just waiting for level 8 to put in, like, two more mages. Zoe plus someone else. Whenever you're running mages, Zoe is just the best unit in the game for your team. I mean, she just provides so much utility. I think I've said this a lot, but she's probably just the best utility unit if you have at least three mages. This is the bard person. This was the person who was one-tapping our tanks before and still doing that. Ouch. Uh, maybe we could beat this guy. Maybe with, with five mages, but the game's about to end, so maybe... We're not able to hit it. We could go for the Zoe here. We could also just go for like a Zeke's. Uh, what item did we have? Oh, we could do another Archangels, I guess, onto the Jace. I guess that's fair too. I, I probably should have taken the Zeke's though. We get a Ice Cream from Astral, so that's really good. Um, yeah, definitely take the Zeke's over the Archangel staff because Jace is like... Yeah, he can use the AP, but it's not anything, not anything game-breaking. I should buy the Lilias before I roll, just in case I hit a Zoe. So that's a mistake there. Uh, but we didn't end up hitting, so I don't get punished for it. I guess this is just our team. We've beaten this guy a bunch of times, so as long as we... I feel like we just counter him. Also, his, like, he only has two items on his Rengar, technically. So it's kind of easy to deal with. And no Infinity Edge on Assassin is kind of griefing. We're able to beat him there. But we lose to the other guy, so we have to get... Uh, we're facing the other guy. We have to get a bit lucky. Maybe we face this Ghost and it's a little easier. Could also go 8 Astral. That'd probably be pretty decent. So we could sell Jason Ezreal. I should have rolled down first to check to see if I hit a Zoe. But these aren't bad items for Aesol. They're not, like, amazing, but not bad. Uh, not hitting anyone here. No Zoes. So I guess we're just going to chill. It does also give our Lux more ability power, so it's not nothing, you know? Oh, perfect. This person positioned for the Assassin player, so it's actually... Is this even better for us? Yeah, because he's all grouped up in the center, so Aesol should be able to hit more people. And ghosts are also easier to fight against. So that's another thing to keep in mind. But yeah, our Lux went through his team, so... We get a little lucky there because we faced the ghost. And then if the assassin guy beats the other person, then we get a free win. And the assassin guy did beat the other person, so... That's how matchmaking can affect the outcome of a game a lot because we lost to the Zaya player like what two or three times in a row 
And then, magically, we face this ghost in our time of need, and then the other person who we beat 100% of the time, like, I don't think we've ever lost to the Rengar all game. He knocks the other player out, so we kind of won the rocks, paper, scissors. That's why health is really important sometimes, because sometimes you don't need the best team to win the game. If you have a lot of health and just outlast other people, because, like, fight RNG happens, even if we lose... Like, 9 times out of 10 against someone, it's like sometimes there's that one time. If you have a lot of life total, you just need to beat them once, right? Uh, going all the way down for ASOLs. Don't really see any, so no Zoe, no ASOL. Didn't really hit that much this game, did we? And we are literally out of item slots for people, which is hilarious if you ask me. Let's see, we had Portable Forge, which which gave us three items. We have the Item Grab Bag, which gave us, I think, three components is what it gives. And then we had Astrals, just giving us a bunch of stuff. I guess I make... Oh, Rengar targeted our luck, so we did not position correctly this game. I should have put my ZZ Rot in the back line. Luckily, my Asol is still alive. And the rest of his team is just melted, so I guess we just win because of that. All right, that is game number two. Again, we had a great start, but then we just didn't hit at all. Didn't end up mattering. Uh, so let's head on into game number three. Okay, we're now into game number three. Uh, again, we have some astrals. We started with a bow, so not the ideal item start, but you guys will see in this game how you could start with something and then it turns into something else later. You're not always locked into a certain start just because you got it on stage two one, for example. Uh, so we get a Leona two. There's also a Nidalee, so we could do Astral, we could go into kind of just a win streak start, maybe with Leona, Ezreal, plus another Swift Shot, and then build a Static Shiv, for example. There are a lot of different options or directions to go here. Our last item is a Rod, so again, could be Rage Blade, could be Archangels, could be Static Shiv. We have three very good item choices to choose from, so we could literally do anything from this point. Celestial Blessing, Triforce, or Weak Spot. Triforce is a little forcing. Weak Spot, it's if you're going AD. So if I go Weak Spot, I definitely probably stem like a Rage Blade and then turn the tier into maybe a Protector's Vow. But I go for Celestial Blessing. That's the most flexible one. It's not like something to celebrate or anything. It's just very average, right? And then we magically hit some Astral 2 stars. So you might be wondering again, when should I start going for Astrals? A game like this definitely would be one of those times where you have a great start for them. I'm going to slam the Archangels. You could also do Static Shiv. It's actually pretty close. You could even put the Static Shiv onto your Nidalee and just have her be kind of like your early game and just keep the item on her so that the rest of your team can have full item slots. I wouldn't really mind that either. Uh, but Archangels probably more reliable if you're going for a Lux build because it's just a Lux item. So if you wanted to win streak, maybe if we had a synergy to put in instead of just like a random Ezreal, I would probably build the Static Shiv. But since we didn't really have a good fourth unit, uh, we're just going to go ahead and build the Archangels and just kind of chill from there. Bow can turn into something like a Giant Slayer. Pretty good combo with that item. I accidentally AFK'd this whole round. Uh, I do play a lot of my lower rated games kind of AFK, even on some of my like when I'm at like a regular rating or like my normal rating, sometimes I still AFK a bunch of times, but it's not on purpose, it's just because I'm doing something else, maybe I had to go to the bathroom, maybe I had to get a drink of water. Uh, I'm normally multitasking when I play TFT, which if you want to actually climb, you probably shouldn't do, but um, you know, you can't always do that every single time, right? At the end of the day, sometimes you just want to play some TFT. But we're getting some good value from this Archangels. We have good value from our two stars so far. We're just looking for mages at this point. So from our orb, we do get the luck. So I'm going to drop her in right away. Sell this Ezreal. Don't need him anymore. Drop the Archangels onto Lux. And we're at four Astral right now. Again, they changed it so that with Astrals, you get an upgraded orb for every new unit you put in uh, based on whatever stars they have. So right now we have... A level 2 Vladimir, a level 2 Nidalee, and a level 1 Lux. So we have 5. So we get the 5th Astral Orb, or whatever it's called. Like the 5th tier of it. There are 15 of them, but we're at number 5 right now. So always keep that in mind. If you can play an additional Astral, it's probably worth it to. But at this point, with the Lilia, I wanted to add in Mages instead of the Skarner. So instead of going for 6 Astral Orbs, or 6 tier, 
we're gonna go for just the five but get the mage buff in so maybe we could kill like one or two more units and i guess it did help in this round we were able to kill two units off so that's that's pretty good we purposely didn't level up so i should sell these talias so we can make 10 gold and the reason why we didn't level up is because we're not on a win streak and we have low money and remember how i said in the previous game how gold is the most important thing for reroll well i need gold then right so that's why i didn't go ahead and do that uh so here we could go for maybe the silas with the tier it's not bad we could build protector's vow with that tier we could also build redemption pretty solid overall you could also go for a sword but there isn't one here or just a tank item something like a belt or a chain vest would have done perfectly fine so now i have the five astral i think that's going to be better than having the extra mages in i definitely don't need the lily anymore because i have the silas and yeah at this point maybe getting in the extra astral one is where astral orbs are better we have one two three four five six seven so we have a like seventh breakpoint astral orb which isn't bad uh okay this person do a quick scout make sure no one else is going astral there seems to be one person who might because he has a lux on his bench so we'll have to look out for that we're probably going to lose against this person even though he has preparation preparation is really good once you hit like stage three and at this point he hasn't stacked up anything so it's not that strong of an augment so we should theoretically win this fight and we do perfect uh what are we thinking of next so we're gonna go level six at stage three two again and we want to just add in the silas we didn't get any augments that increase our traits we didn't get like a mage crest or anything we didn't get uh, anything for astrals or pretty much any other synergy in the game so we're gonna go for a similar build from last time but yeah a lot of people think like bows end of the world for ap comps but there's actually like a lot of different items you could build with a bow granted it's not my first pick i'm not gonna deny that you know uh but it does build static shiv which reduces magic resistance of the enemy team which obviously is very helpful it builds zz rot portal which is just a tank item and it builds giant slayer which is good for any late game damage carry and yeah if we plan on making it to the late game definitely we'll want that eventually we get the lux too there that's pretty lucky we got some gold from the orbs we got a tier got some gold from the krugs and more gold we could probably sell that make 30 and is it static shiv slam so if you're greedy you save if you're not greedy you want to be more aggressive you slam the item i think we could like and in this situation in this specific game you could honestly go either way we're at 88 life right now so we're not like dying by any means but if you slam the item it probably secures a top four or like helps the top four a lot more but if you save the item like i'm not gonna blame you for that either i think you could do either or and do just as fine because again if you want to win streak during stage three like you'll be chilling because you're just gonna have uh like a really strong early game item and if you greet it for like a spear shojin giant slayer things like that then then you'll be fine as well uh, i know we did have the extra tier on the silas you might be wondering like oh uh, this augment choice is easy here it's just ludens I guess you could consider preparation because preparation is really good if you're going for a reroll comp. But Luden's just very solid. Um, but again, I, I know you have, or I know that we did have the extra tier on our Silas, but I actually don't really like blue buff that much on Lux. Like, yeah, it's okay, but with the Archangels, Archangels likes doing late fight damage. Blue buff loves casting early because uh, you get a lot of bonus mana to start off the fight so they don't really synergize that well together and also lux i believe she has 60 mana so while it is still decent because it takes four auto attacks to cast every time it's nothing like insane right like spirit shojin does the same thing except spirit shojin also gives additional stats so spirit shojin would be better than blue buff in most cases especially since we have the archangels because the first cast doesn't really mean much for lux so uh, again like blue buff even though it's like a it's definitely a good item on lux but it isn't anything i would go crazy over 
I might as well kill one of the bows by building the static shiv. So unfortunately, nothing good in our shop and we just got to above 50 gold, so no rolling on that turn. This person's going for Sedge 3. I don't think I've seen that that many times in my life with the Zippy carry. Uh-oh, so it's like a guild Zippy reroll maybe? I have, I have no clue, but it's not, it's not doing so hot. I don't think Sedge 3 is something you should aim for in a game of TFT, but you know, I've been surprised before. Apparently, there's this AD Zyra comp going around. I don't know if it's like actually good or not, but some people have gotten to high ranks with it, so I guess you have to respect everything nowadays. So on this item carousel, we have the extra tier. We could go second Archangels. We could go for the Redemption here because we have that. We could go for Belt as well. I think I'm leaning more towards the Redemption, and here's why. We have one damage item. We have a support item in the Static Shiv, which is pretty much another damage item as well. So we need some tankiness, so that's why I would rather go with the redemption than uh, than the extra or the second Archangel step. Another thing, and while we're rolling, so we pick up the Varus and the Lux, is that I would rather have a Chain Vest for Protector's Vow, but again, since we are high HP, we don't get the luxury of picking what items we want. So if you did have a lower pick order and you're in this exact same situation, then yeah, I would get the Protector's Vow instead. I do sell the extra Varus there to get above 50 gold. Varus, it's not that he's not important, it's just that he's not the main person of this comp, so getting him to 3 star isn't like the be all end all, you know? If I do a big roll down and I hit a lot of Varuses, like yeah, I'll pick him up. But if I need to make an interest threshold, which is what I needed to do this game, then I definitely would sell him. And I'd keep the Skarners and the Nidalees because I might have a chance to 3-star them, which gives me better Astral Loots later in the game. Uh, it's harder to get the 1 cost units at level 6, but as the game goes on, it's easier and easier to get the Varuses, so that's why I'm not too concerned about him right now. We get some good drops there. Nothing here, nothing here. And I should not have rolled that last time, because even if there was a Lux there, I would lose interest. I guess, like, this one's tough. Two Varuses is different than one Varus, and we cleared up our bench a bit. I don't know if you guys noticed, but in the previous fight, we had two Luxes and two Skarners on our bench, and that took up a lot of room, but since we were upgrading them while we were rolling down, we do have more room on our bench, so at this point, it's like, do you need the Varuses? Like, again, probably not, but if there are two of them and I have room on my bench now, like, I guess maybe I could keep them. The only way... I would regret this is if I see two Luxes in my next shop, but if I see two Luxes in my next shop, am I really that angry? Not really too sure. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't be, obviously, but... <sighs> yeah, this this one's tough. I, I don't know if I should sell the Varus or or not. It's, it's, it is two of them, so it is different from the other situation. But we do lose our streak, which is unfortunate. We get a Chain Vest, some gold and more gold always sell units on your bench whenever you're picking up orbs because it gives you chances to get to get additional units okay so i don't regret selling the or keeping the varus anymore because we got a lot of them okay there's a nidalee we almost have everything we're so close yet so far because the sooner we upgrade these guys the easier it is to get or the we will be able to get more of the orbs for the astral stuff so it's just like extremely good you know uh yeah you could go for shojin here shojin's like the better mana regeneration item as we were discussing before could you have gone hand of justice you could have but again we have celestial blessing so you don't really need that uh, we do have ludens as well so shojin gets a bit more value there too uh, could we have built maybe a protector's vow redemption as we were talking about earlier we could have done that too but we don't have any healing reduction especially when you're running an area of effect damage comp such as lux because you know she shoots her thing out and it hits a bunch of people and we have a bunch of ludens going around and we have the static ship going on too having anti-heal is really nice because when you do aoe but don't kill anything they have a chance to heal back up so sunfire is kind of like a nice to have <sighs> okay so obviously bruiser trait not really what we want uh, it's just not that helpful. Scope weapons useless. So you could YOLO the Ancient Archives, but it's clearly a reroll here because we're kind of forcing a comp. And we see a blue battery. So thank God we did not build blue buff. That's kind of lucky. Woodland Charm. 
I mean, it's decent, but it's nothing like that crazy. Level up, uh, we're re-rolling, so we're not gonna make use of that augment that much. So it's clearly just a blue battery and we'll just be happy with that. It's really good with Ludum, so it's definitely a good augment to have here. So we take the blue buff and we get the other Lux. Oh no, we need this Silas. I think I should sell maybe a Nidalee to pick that up. Yeah. And then I'll wait to roll because if I manage to hit upgrades, I, I'll probably run out of space on my bench, so I might not be able to hold everything. So I'm going to wait till next round to roll. If I picked my augment faster, which I should have, I don't know why I took so long picking the blue buff. You should just roll down like pretty much down to 20 maybe to get all the upgrades because again the faster we upgrade our team the sooner we get the astral scaling so i should have rolled down earlier here in fact even on stage 4-1 i probably should have rolled to around 20 because we were really close to everything um so we get the orb it is a champion astral orbs are different than regular orbs because it warns you before you or it doesn't let you pick it up <sighs> this is so tragic <laughs> Maybe I sell the other Nidalee to pick up this Vladimir. Oh my, that's so tragic, man. More dog. Okay, we get the Silas. And then we took too long, so our Lux 3 doesn't go on the board. How silly is that? The Astral Orb was on the ground, and then it doesn't complete the Lux 3. Like, I get why our bench is full, but then, like... The TFT gods gave us... Skarner and Nidalee, which we do want and we are holding on to. Or what was it? Vladimir and Skarner? I, I forget which. And then it shows it to us again, and then we just don't. It's like a waste of a roll, you know? Uh, but it's like more of a teasing roll. If, it, if the next roll had nothing in it, I wouldn't think anything about it, but since it was specifically the same units, the one cost, it tilts me a little, you know? So we have a glove. Pretty much the only item you could build from glove is Jeweled Gauntlet. I guess you could build a Shroud of Stillness. I guess you could build a Thieves Gloves. I guess you could build a Banshee's Claw. I guess you could build a Hand of Justice, but like, clearly the best item is Jeweled Gauntlet with that item. Uh, belt is decent because we do need tank items as we discussed before, so we could just hold on to that there. We get our Lux 3, beautiful, and after we pick up this Nidalee, I think we would rather kind of level up to level 7 or 8. We go ahead and do that there. Uh, I, even though I like all the one-cost units, we're not that desperate for them. Yet. I dropped in the extra Varus because he's just the most expensive unit, and he CCs, so it's just the most worth it. It's good that our other Varus has a static shiv. That way they use their ultimates at different times so they don't overlap the CC. It's kind of like a hidden benefit. Whenever you have two of the same crowd control units, Try to have them cast at different times or put them on opposite ends of the map so that they hit different targets. It's like a neat trick you could try. It's not really a trick, it's just like pretty logical, right? Uh, so we get up to 80 gold. Okay, so remember last game at level 7 we didn't really put that much good in? It's the same story this game, so we're just waiting to get to level 8. We'll probably do it on stage 5-1. The good thing about hitting Lux early, even though we don't have the 1 cost units at 3 star, is that we could probably just get Aurelian Soul from just rolling, which is obviously really, really helpful. Yeah, this Shojin blue buff combo with Ludens is doing a lot of work. This is a zippy reroll. We, we might get zipped. Oh no, we're actually gonna get zipped. We got zipped, oh my God. <laughs> that's That's too funny. You know what? I'll give it to the Zippy player. Okay, this shop is tr is it trash? I can't tell. I'm AFK during the uh, during the Treasure Dragon. I finally woke up and we are playing again. I mean, I can't make anything with that spatula, so it's whoa. That is a take. Please tell me I take this. It has two tank items for Silas. What more could I ask for? Beautiful. Lockets, whatever. But you know, it is what it is. Uh, so Protector's Vow and Titans on the Silas. And then I have this extra Silas. I guess I sell it to build a Banshee's Claw. And then we could also get the Locket on someone. I guess I dropped the Locket on like Vlad or Varus. 
I think I should put it on Varus instead of this Nidalee. This is fine. Uh, I actually decided to roll a bit. I'm not sure why. I think I definitely should have leveled up to 8. I know I hit the Varus, so it looks like I'm a genius, but I, I think that is a mistake. I should have leveled up to level 8 right now as well. And roll for maybe like 5 mages or something like that. The Varus is looking pretty good though. But again, I, I would have preferred the Locket on the Varus, just because he benefits from the AP more than the Nidalee, so... But again, like, I do have the item remover, so I could change my mind later on if I got, like, two really good Varus items, but it's not the end of the world, you know? Some decisions can have, like, big implications, but others, they barely change anything at all, so sometimes the game just works like that. So we put in the Shapeshifter. I guess I could use a Swift Shot. I probably should roll here. Put in the frontliners instead. Yeah, I guess that's fine. I ended up deciding to roll too late. Um, I guess I kind of put a team in, but it isn't really that much stronger. And I had the Gnar for Shapeshifter, but there's a Jace in my shop that I just didn't see at all. Jace is obviously better because he's more expensive, tankier. So it would make sense that he is a better unit. We need a third item for Lux. We're going to be looking out for that on this carousel. But we get a good win there. There's a Nidalee. Maybe we get the Nidalee 3. I mean, it doesn't really matter that much at this point. Get a lot of gold. Let's roll down. I kind of want the Aesol. Or Zoe. Aesol or Zoe? There's Zoe. We don't even need the Zaya anymore because we hit the Zoe. We'd rather run mages. So I'm going to sell that, swap her in, sell the other Zaya, buy the Lilia, swap that in for Jace. And okay, we're, we're set for a bit. Five Mage is really good, especially, 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 especially with Zoe. Like, I know I've been hyping her up this whole time, but just watch any fight with Zoe in it. She has no items, she's one star, and she's going to make like half my team invulnerable. I mean, that is really good, right? And then she also, like, put out a daisy. That's incredible. But am I going to get zippied again? I think my Silas should be able to mana reeve it, so I think we're fine. Okay, we did not get zipped. Zipster is at 4 HP. <laughs> Isn't that crazy how he hit that unit, though? 3 star? That's really expensive. Let's see, 9 times 6 gold is... 54 gold that's a 54 gold unit plus you have to see it in your shop whereas lux is a 18 gold unit it is like three times as cheap but he's able to find that at like a pretty reasonable time i think one of the other lux games we played we found lux 3 at like stage 6 6 1 was that last game and he finds it during like stage 5 which is wild right especially since we get astral orbs so we get even more Copies of the champion. Wow. Uh, you know, sometimes some people are built different, you know. We're rolling a bit. We do find the Nidalee, so we clear up a bench a bit. I'm really looking for Silas 3. I think that's going to spike our comp up in, like, a lot. And then getting a Aurelian Soul would be pretty neat as well. Right, we are facing... Olaf. Or Warrior. Our Lux isn't in the best position because we're using the Trap Claw, but they do line up here pretty nicely for her. Alright, pick up a win there. Again, the Luden's doing a ton of damage. At this point, since I hit a couple more of the three stars, I haven't really seen that many more Silas's. Oh wow, I'm actually really fortunate that I moved my Lux there because this guy has a... Let's crank hook. I mean, I do have the trap claw, but it saves the trap claw from doing other stuff now. Um, what was I saying before? Yeah, I guess level nine. We have a lot of gold. We also have 75 health, so we could use our health as a resource. We could afford to lose like maybe three rounds or something. So the Silas makes it a lot harder. It's like now do we roll or do we level up to level nine? Because now we got more copies, so it's more likely that we're going to hit. By the way, hat is pretty good on Zoe. Some people might save this for their Aurelian soul. But I mean, Hat on Zoe, it gives like a lot of value. It's probably like one of the best AP items on her. 
Contrary to popular belief, Zoe does not do any damage. She only has one damage uh, ability, which is the Lux spell, and that's a 1 in 4 chance, so you're actually rarely going to see it. I make a huge mistake here. I thought Talia CC'd people, but she does not. Talia just shoots a missile out, so Lilia is much better than Talia. I can't even fit the Shivana. <laughs> I'd rather have the mage buff in. It's tough, though. It's tough, though. It hurts to not buy it, you know? There's another Zoe. Okay, yeah, just two Zoes. Screw it. Um, yeah, Dragon Claw doesn't matter on who, and then Shojin on the Zoe for sure. I do have an item remover for my Aurelian Soul if I manage to hit an A-Soul too, but, like, Zoe's just such an incredible unit. It's I'm down bad for Zoe. Because look at that. It's like, she did decent damage this game. She puts out the tankiness, CCs the whole team, invulnerabilities. It's like, there's just not much more you can ask for from a unit. Wow, incredible. The other person has a lot of Zoes too. He's got five Zoes. Holy cow. He likes Zoe even more than I do. Oh, there's a Vladimir. Maybe we get Vlad 3. Not that it changes much, but... Uh, it's still... Better than nothing, right? I guess if I get a Jace 2, it's better than the level. Oh, there's Aesol. Uh, so I think I take out mages now. Or take out five mages. Drop her in, and then we'll be good. Roll a bit more. Nothing, nothing, nothing. See, I'd rather have Zoe than the Bard, for example, even though I'm not gaining the mage benefit. Um, just because I, I think it's that good. So you guys might be wondering, when do I itemize my Aesol? Generally, I think you want Aesol to be 2-star before you itemize him. And by itemize, I mean like item removing the Zoe or the Lux. Um, and yes, you heard that correctly. Sometimes you do want to item remove the Lux because Aesol is just that much better. And my perfect items are generally going to be on my Lux instead of my Zoe. We just got kind of lucky this game that Zoe has like regular mage items. Uh, but other games, she might have like random crap on her that you can't really transfer over onto a soul that effectively so you instead item remove your lux which has perfect mage items because lux and a soul they generally use the same exact items and then you can go from there so that is very good get a bunch of gold there by the a soul too so yeah you could item remove your lux i, I make the mistake here i, I think i should have just like kept the other stuff on zoe i definitely want like the jeweled gauntlet on my a soul because it's it's just so good. Or the Archangels. I mean, they're both fine, right? Uh, okay. This person is a Zaya build, but we're able to kind of squeeze it away. Nice. Because, yeah, look at how much damage Aesol does. Imagine if she had the Lux items. I guess my Zoe, again, as I was saying before, has pretty much really good mage items anyways, or Aesol items, so it's kind of the same thing. But you saw, like... 1475 damage from the Aesol, AoE. Like, there's just... Nothing gets better than that, you know? It's a legendary unit. Please let us get this mage cap. Cringe. No. <laughs> I guess we get this chalice. Okay, it's not bad. It's not Get our orb. I don't even know what I'm rolling for right now. I guess I'm looking for another... The last Vladimir. Maybe I get Aesol 3. Okay, we, we found the last Vladimir. Uh, probably Chalice the anyone. It doesn't matter. And then, yeah, our, our team's pretty set right now. Again, I think I should item remove, but it's not the end of the world. Because if Aesol was doing 1,400 damage before with just a hat, imagine how much more damage he could be doing with, like, uh, Archangels or Jeweled Gauntlet. Okay, he got Mana Reaved and Zephyr. Let's see what he's going to do. Big bomb in the back, 1100, holy cow. See, he would have one-tapped the back line if he had a third item or a second damage item. Not that it mattered, but, like, you could see the difference in, like, having a one damage item Aesol versus two damage items. It's pretty big. All right, so there's the belt. Don't really need it. Uh, at this point in the game, you just want to make sure you have good positioning the other guy, he double Zephyr does. Oh my god, this guy took the Mage Cap to put it on his Nyla. Come on, we could have used, used it so much better. Imagine Mage Aesol with this comp. Holy cow, it would have given us five mages. Oh my god, Aesol is just too special. 
I know Lux is leading the damage charts, but like, you you really just don't need her. You get another Chalice, so that's that's pretty good. Chalice is incredible on mages because <sighs> what's it called? It gives um, like essentially ability power is double the effectiveness on mages because because they cast twice. So Chalice is just the best support item for them. All right, we did get a Giant Slayer for our Aesol, so I guess look at that. Okay, now now he's one tapping. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, maybe not one tapping everything, but better than nothing, right? I guess they were scale scorns, and maybe they have resistance built up or something like that. But yeah, that is game number three, was it? And in this game, we had a pretty good start hit everything on time we just had a little trouble like filling up our bench and we definitely should have all in on stage four one because if we hit all the units there even if we go down to like 10 gold i would have rolled down to maybe like 30 or 20 but even if we went down to 10 or zero gold and we hit everything we would have made the money back with the increased astral shop so that's something to keep in mind there all right let's get into game number three we started off with a belt and we got three gold off the start at the first minion wave in the shop here Again, we're going for Astrals. We did get three Astrals, so these are the only games that I'm considering going for this comp. Let's go ahead and pick those up. We ended up getting a tier. Keep in mind, you don't need Astrals in the Stage 1 rounds. I may have said this before, but again, you only get the Astral Orbs after player versus player combat, so you don't really need to sweat if you get it on 2-1 or 2-2 compared to getting it right here on like Stage 1-4. So, as in previous videos, once you're in gold, people try to play some of the more meta comps a little more often. Uh, maybe they're looking at like some leveling guide, but they really haven't mastered it quite yet. Uh, so in this game, I want you guys to focus on maybe following all the other leveling patterns that we looked at before. Um, in this augment specifically, we definitely want the middle one. I mean, we're going for astral, so you might as well pick up the astral augment. So there's not really, if that augment is bad when you're forcing a comp, it will never be good. So we're going to assume that the game developers did a good job in balancing the game. And so if we're forcing Astral, we're gonna sell every non-Astral unit and pick up the Astral Augment. Um, we built a Warmogs because we need to keep the tier for Lux. Lux like Shojin, we could also build Archangels on her. Tears is just like a really good item for caster comps, uh, as you can imagine. So the two belts, just go ahead, shove that onto our Skarner or Silas later on. You could use Skarner as an item holder, and you could also just like put it on someone random and then swap it onto Silas later. I like to sell my Skarner, unless I get him three-starred for some random reason early on, uh, once I get a Silas, because Silas is just a much better tank. Uh, so in this shop, we get a Vladimir 2 and another Skarner. That's really nice. We could go ahead and drop Vlad in. And as I was saying before, like in gold, people are going to Maybe they're looking at a tier list and they're going to be playing the meta comps, but they're not going to know exactly what the best way to play them is. They just know what the champions are and they're just pretty much just copying whatever they see on a website and nothing wrong with that. If you guys want, you can head on over to my website. I do the same exact thing, uh, bunnymuffins.lol slash meta. If you guys need like a picture or a quick refresher on what's good in the current times, uh, but they don't know when to roll. For example, I see a lot of people playing... Maybe like a Zaya comp. Zaya is famous for needing to roll at level 8, not at level 7, but a lot of leveling guides, they say, oh, go to level 7 on stage 4-1 and roll a little bit until you stabilize. And that is good for a lot of different compositions, but not the Zaya comp, because the Zaya comp really likes rolling at level 8. You could go on the flip side as well. Uh, let's say you are running a comp that wants to roll on level 7, maybe like a Whispers comp, uh, because they like playing around the 2 cost, 3 cost, and 4 cost units alike. And instead of doing a roll down on stage 4-1, they greed to level 8 every single game. And that could cost them games as well. Again, they're following a specific leveling pattern. It's not like a bad leveling pattern, but it might not be the right one for the comp that they're playing. So that's one thing to keep in mind around this rating. Um, so it's like, obviously not everyone's going to be playing perfectly. Maybe some people get a little lucky in some of your games, but it's nothing completely out of the ordinary, you know? Uh, so on this carousel, I like to get a rod most likely here. Uh, it's You could build the sword with the Shoujin, because sword does build a lot of mage items in this meta right now. So with sword, you could build Shoujin, you could build Giant Slayer, you could build Hextech Gunblade. There are, there are a couple of options. It's not like a 
complete dead item, even though it's a sword and your mages. Uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind. It's not like the end of the world. It's not like the end of the world. But let's just go ahead and grab the archangels here. You want a lot of rods in this comp because you could build archangels, ionic spark, jeweled gauntlet, Revenant's death cab, hexsec gunblade. So that's like five items. There might be one more that you could build that I'm not remembering right now. Uh, so you definitely have a bunch of options there. Uh, our team's looking a little weak right now. It's not the strongest. This other guy's going astrals as well. Um. Hmm, that's an interesting idea. If you go Astrals with Pandora's Bench, you could get a bunch of three stars and then Pandora's Bench them into other stuff, which could be funny. I'm not sure if that's actually optimal or good, but it's something to consider, I guess. Uh, we're able to win this one, which we actually don't want to do. We don't want to be winning any rounds right now. That's why we stayed level four. You may have noticed like a lot of my flex games, maybe we leveled up at this point in time. But yeah, against... When you're playing reroll, you like to have a streak, and it's generally a lose streak, but we just did not get that this game. We do have a bunch of upgrades, so that's why we were able to win, but most people level up to level 5, so you generally will lose if you're level 4. Maybe I could have held off on building the Archangel staff, maybe that would have forced me to lose the game. Uh, so maybe that's a slight mistake on my part there. What you should do instead is get the rod from Carousel, and then wait until the fight starts. If you're facing a super strong team, then you build the Archangels. But if you're facing someone weak, like the last person we face, and there's a chance you could win, then you hold off on building it until the end of the round. Uh, that's like a little neat little trick you could kind of do uh, in case you don't know if you want to slam the item or not. Oddly enough, we almost beat this guy, but not quite. So we end up griefing our streak, and we're probably punished pretty badly for that. We may, may have lost around like... Maybe 10 gold for that, because uh, 3 plus 3 plus 3, yeah, we probably lost around like 10 gold, which is obviously a very big deal. Uh, 10 gold is nothing to scoff at, especially early game. Okay, let's see what we get here. We get a chain vest. Maybe it was like 8 gold or something like that, but if we lose in stage 3-1, that that's another 3 gold, then it would be 11. So it's like 8 to 11 gold, depending on what happens next. Alright, so we have another Vladimir there. And I guess you have to factor in like the lost interest gold. So yeah, it could be very well 10 still from the very start. Uh, let's just go ahead and slam this item. Gargoyle Stoneplate is very good in Astral Comps or any Mage Comp in general because you're only running Silas as your main tank. So when you're doing that, having the solo tank items such as Gargoyle Stoneplate and Dragon Claw is really, 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 really helpful because they're your only tank. If you're running multiple tanks, you want other items because you won't get as much value from the Stone Plate or the Dragon Claw because the way those items work is the more units that are attacking them, the more bonuses you get. For Stone Plate, you get more resistances, and for Dragon Claw, I believe you heal a bit more for that. Uh, so going into the next Augment round, let's see what we get. Ooh, this is when you start praying and thanking the Lord, uh, the Mort Dog Lord, because you got blue buff. When you don't have a mana item for Lux, and when you're playing a caster comp. So I am living the dream right now. We level up to level 6, we slow roll a little bit, we get our third mage finally, and then now we can just chill again. I actually decide to roll more. I'm not sure why I did that in this game. I think I should have just chilled at 50 gold and just slow rolled. I really don't know why I'm rolling here because that is a little puzzling. Maybe I was looking for Silas, but... Even though Silas is a big upgrade, I feel like I'm not in that dire of a position quite yet to roll down, especially this much gold. Uh, it's unlucky we didn't hit, don't get me wrong, so if I hit, I might look like a genius, but in hindsight, even if I did hit the Silas, probably regret rolling there a little bit because... <sighs> I guess I was one off Lux 2 star, but even then, I feel like it's not that big of a deal. So we did end up losing round st or sorry stage three one probably looking like another loss in stage three two so man that that lose streak really costed us big uh, this person's lagoon he's got celestial blessing prismatic and he's got seraphine two already holy cow i guess he rolled as well because he has 20 gold only so going into our next shop we don't really see anything that we want that badly i guess i am really desperate i skipped varus maybe that was my thought process to get to five 
Astral as well, but then I just skipped the champion, so I'm very confused on what I'm looking for here. It was probably only Silas. All right, we're at 26 gold, I guess. Don't do what I did in this game because that was just a complete waste of money. Um, yeah, there's no other way to word that, really. Uh, we're facing a Soam with Verdant Veil. That's an interesting choice for that. I guess getting your cast not interrupted is decent, but I feel like you want Verdant Veil in like a lot of comps where you have multiple carries. You don't really want it in a solo carry or duo carry comp. The reason why is because it buffs your whole team with the crowd control immunity thing, right? And the way that works the best is if you have a lot of people who actually do stuff. But in a Lagoon comp, who's really doing stuff? You don't really care about your tank, so you really just care about Soam and Nyla, and I guess Zoe to a certain extent, but you're not going to get Zoe until much, much later into the game. But we don't know his choices, so I guess we shouldn't judge too harshly. Uh, so we get another rod. Again, we build so many items from the rod, and we have the blue buff from the augment so we don't actually need a mana item which is pretty big because that means we could go triple damage item and that's really really good for lux we're facing a shimmer scale person with level up level 750 gold holy cow so that is less combat power but wow lux trolled notice how she targeted the ezreal and then the twitch she targets the furthest champion technically but then the furthest champion if they're tied i guess she switches around which is really unlucky because that just means you don't kill anything. So we end up losing that round pretty pretty badly, four units. I wonder if they're going to fix that or if that's intended because that even though it's like technically kosher because they're like, oh, Lux targets the furthest enemy and there was a tie, right? So we can't really blame her that much. But it really makes her a bad unit when she switches. So it's like, where do you draw the line, you know? Uh, maybe someone can go into Mortdog's stream when he does like a... Uh, Q&A and ask him that because uh, that would be interesting to know. Uh, maybe they did fix it already but I looked into the recent patch and in the bug section they did change Lux's targeting a bit but it was more because she bent her shots and now she shoots in a straight line. You may have noticed that in the previous games. We might see it here as well. Um, not in this specific fight because everyone was in a line but in some patches she kind of bends her shots and some other patches she shoots straight. Um, but they changed it so that she should shoot straight every single time. Okay, we got a lot of Skarners and Nidalees, so I guess we're going to get those guys to three stars, which is good because we don't have Silas yet. Okay, we finally get Silas. Do we want to swap him out for the Skarner, though? It's awkward at this point because we have so many Skarners. So if we get Skarner 3, is having him as our main tank that bad? Probably. But we're really close. You do get better astral loot the more astral units you have. So I'm in a bit of a predicament here. Okay, so we get a bunch of gold, which is pretty nice. We get up to 55. And we get another Lux item. Oh, finally, Lux 2. I was rolling a lot for that Lux, so it now we see all of her. Okay, I guess we go for Skarner 3 this game. And hmm, do we chill or we roll down? I think we could actually roll a little bit. So if I end up not rolling, I think that's a mistake. The reason is, is because we're one off Nidalee and two off Vladimir, and the more units you get in, the better your astral shops are, or your astral orbs are. And we have a chance to maybe hit a Silas 2, and maybe we magically hit a bunch of Luxes, and then get a Lux 3 on the rolldown. So on this particular stage, I would have rolled down to probably at least 30 in hindsight, uh, if not, maybe even 20, but probably not lower than that. It depends what we hit along the way because sometimes it's like oh it's easy to say let's roll to this amount but it also is dynamic right so if something happens it changes our or what we want to do so let's say we hit like one more vladimir for sure i'd be rolling down to 20 instead of just staying at 30 because we'd be one off a bunch of things uh okay or assuming we hit one vladimir and no nidalees let's say uh, because then we're one off like a bunch of different things whenever you roll you always want to be aiming to hit multiple okay so i should take think fast here but i take <laughs> i thought too long about it so it's just celestial blessing it's fine you know think fast probably would have been the best thing to get here because we could just three star a whole team but this isn't bad because we do need healing on our lux eventually and we have uh two damage items already and remember how I always tell you guys, for our carries, you either want, or you want, like, some sort of way to 
uh, get different damage multipliers on them and have a healing effect. So for attack damage carries like Zaya, you want stuff like attack speed, critical strike, and attack damage. Uh, but on things like casters, you want stuff like mana regeneration, ability power, uh, critical strike, and some healing as well. And from our augments, we have both the mana regen and the healing. So then we could focus purely on damage. So we have all our AP, so the next best thing to get would probably be something like a Jeweled Gauntlet to really buff up our Lux. Okay, so we're one off Vladimir, two off Lux. Again, here, maybe I should have rolled to 20, but I thought too long picking the Augment, so I didn't really have time to do my turn. And can Arvaris finish this guy off? At least we didn't get bench screwed this game because it's happened in a couple of these Astral games. It's probably going to happen in the future ones as well. It's just really annoying when that happens. Bench screw as in like you see too many of the same champions, but you don't actually three star any of them. So then your bench being, so then your bench ends up being full of like one and two stars and it could get a little awkward. So yeah, we definitely should be rolling down here because we're not the healthiest. We're not the most hurt either, but like this is just a good time for our team to spike. So it's a good time to roll down and we're like not far off a lot of things. Unfortunately, we're only hitting the Varuses. So this is a bit unlucky. Definitely, when you guys are in this situation, you are like, how many Luxes were we off of? We were two off of Lux. Uh, you generally do hit, but unlucky this game, you know? It happens. Also, like, where's my Silas 2? At least give me a courtesy Silas 2, because this is getting a little ridiculous. Alright, this is the Sone player. Our Lux is not doing much damage at first, because the Archangels do take a little while to scale up. So she can't even kill the Talia after four casts on her. Granted, the Talia is healing a little bit from Celestial, but it's still a little ridiculous how she <laughs> casted four times and didn't kill. But now she's buffed up, so when she casts now, theoretically, she should do a lot of damage. Okay, there we go. Finally. Do I lock this shop? I ended up locking the shop. That way I'm only one off of Varus 3. Uh, you could skip it if you want, though. I wouldn't be too disappointed in you. There is a Lux there. But she has a bow. I could build a Giant Slayer from that. Oh, another damage amplification, I guess, is like a Giant Slayer. So that's another thing to consider. Ah, do I get it or do I not? Hmm. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Should I have taken the Lux with a bow? That means I have to get a sword on this dragon. And that also means if I get something like a Radiant item, I can't put it on my Lux because she would have three full items on her. So it's a bit awkward. Let's see what we get here. Bunch of gold. I think now you just donkey roll to zero every turn. If you guys don't know what donkey rolling is, it just means rolling to zero. It's just like uh, we use donk. We represent donkeys in like a bad way in the English language, at least. I don't know why, but it's just something that people do. This person's team is all one star. He's level nine. Oh, because he had level up. That's why. But all one-star team, not looking too hot for this guy. He should probably roll down right now. Or like, not right now, last round. But maybe took too long to do the turn. Uh, that is a scary Shivana. Holy cow. He's got Spell Crit and IE. Yeah, because whenever you are you have a lot of one-stars on your team, you generally want to roll at that point. Because, like, I know we lost, and we have zero gold, and he has 40, but, like, it's just like a theoretical good thing to do. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and build that on our Skarner and do a bit of rolling. Donkey rolling, nope. We are not blessed with uh, the donkey's blessing, I guess. Okay, what's this guy's bench? That's very interesting bench. Holy cannoli, that is an Olaf 3. See, how do people hit Olaf 3? And he's level 7 with 30 gold, so he has more gold than us. He's a higher level and has more gold. And his unit is more expensive, and I have Astral Orbs helping me hit my Lux. But I'm not able to hit Lux 2 before this guy hits Olaf 3. Or sorry, I'm not able to hit Lux 3 before he hits Olaf 3. Some stuff is really unfair in this game. You know, that's a good thing though. That's why I have these videos, or have these games in these videos, because... Some people, they only show the games where they get like Aurelian Soul 3 star. And yeah, those games are fun to watch, but 
if you're ever in those situations, do you ever like really understand what happens afterwards? Because uh, I don't think a lot of people, a lot of people do, because uh, those games are really easy to play. But if you're in a situation where other people are hitting stuff and you are not, then it's a little more confusing. So you might be wondering, why did I put the Giant Slayer on the Lux instead of the Hat? Well, we already have a lot of ability power from the Archangel staff, so I rather amplified through the Giant Slayer bonus instead, uh, so that she deals more damage to high health targets. And there is our Lux 2 at stage 5-1. It's not the latest I've ever hit it, but it's also not the earliest. Again, we're facing a guy with Olaf 3. I don't even think he had... I guess he had Pandora's Bench, so I guess that helps out a little bit, but it's still a little ridiculous if you ask me. Um, I guess I could have taken Think Fast and I would have hit it, hopefully. But we did roll a lot. It's not like we didn't have that big of an economy. All right, so our Lux is throwing a bunch of stuff out. She's healing a little bit. Those shots are... See what I mean? I think these shots are bending a bit. I think it hit the Siphon plus the other people, which is a little interesting, but um, I believe that is a bug that is fixed now. Or maybe not a bug, maybe it was intended before, but then it didn't make any sense. Uh, so we're able to knock this person out, which is good. We finally have our team together. We still have Silas 1, keep that in mind. Silas 2 is definitely big, big upgrade. I'm actually really glad that we put the tank items on the Skarner because if not, we'd just be hard stuck with a with a Silas 1 with 3 tank items, which is not what you want at all. Uh, so that's another thing to keep in mind. I'm saving this hat. Notice how I didn't put it on the Varus. If you did put it on the Varus, I wouldn't be that disappointed. I feel like that is valid to do. Uh, but I want to greed for the Aurelian Soul right now because we have a lot of 3-star units. So when you have all your Astral units at 3-star, you have fi tier 15 of the astral payoff or whatever it is, whatever you want to call it, I mean. And that means you have a high chance of getting Aurelian Soul. So that's why I'm keeping or greeting the items for, for that dragon because it's just like a very high chance to hit off the orb. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Unfortunately, we need to level up before we play him. Do not, I repeat, do not sell your... Zyra and then bench the Silas in order to play Aurelian Soul for 8 Astral. The reason why is because you lose the mage buff and if you lose mage buff your Lux is just going to start griefing you and doing nothing so that's why you don't want to do that. So we just have to save our gold, somehow get to level 8 and then play this Aurelian Soul. All right, this person has Zoe so I guess they win. We got destroyed there. You all already know how down bad I am for Zoe. Uh, let's get a Morello because that's going to help our Aesol a little bit, do a little bit more damage. So we get a Chain Vest there. Not the most helpful, but not useless either. And we'll sell that. Uh, I guess you could replace the Nidalee. Nidalee's not really doing too much. It's mainly because we have two items for the Aesol. So you have to ask yourself what's worse, playing a one-star unit versus a three-star unit or having two items on your bench. I'd say having two items on your bench is worse. Also, one of them is just uh, Morello, so you could just say he's a Morello applier, which isn't too bad. Oh, it's the Olaf 3 guy again. I think we actually beat him this time, depending on how much our Skarner tanks. Maybe our Aesol It's the whole map. Do we lose this one? I cannot tell. Okay, we actually win, right? Right? No, we lose. Ah, that's okay. Not the end of the world. We're at 8 health though, so maybe it is. We're at 1 life. Oh, but we got a top 4. Not bad. Uh, let's grab this orb. And do we have enough to level up? I think we need 48 gold to level up, so we're actually super unlucky. We can't get the 8 astral in for the massive ability power buff. Plus, getting better orbs would be pretty helpful too. Ah, man. Missing out on 2 gold is really disappointing. Because that would make our team like infinitely stronger. You know what actually costed us this? Remember we lost like 10 gold earlier on in the game? We actually would have had the right amount of gold if we if we played correctly earlier on. Also, another thing is um, we probably would have hit Lux earlier and then we'd have more health at this point in the game. But yeah, just top four there. You know, we did misplay, so I'm not saying we didn't misplay. But it was a little annoying that a lot of other people got really strong teams. I guess the Olaf guy, we outplaced him. Same with the Shivana 2 person. But again, that shows you how a mistake in the early game can really punish you later on. And try not to make those mistakes because 
because as you guys can see here, it really drastically changed how the end game looked because we were a bit of gold off of getting eight astrals in for the massive ability power buff for our Lux and our Aurelian Soul. Also, we didn't have Silas 2 that game. I feel like that's just unlucky. Everyone played Silas this game. One, two, three, four, five, six Silas players. That's actually unheard of. But let's move on from that. You know, not every game's gonna go according to plan. So let's move on into game number five. All right, let's get into game number five. We have a sword start right now and we got two champions. We got a Diana and a Kaisa, so that's around five gold. And then in this new shop, we get a bunch of Malphites and we do have the option of Skarner. Spoiler alert, since this is an Astral only video, obviously we're going to be going Astrals this game. It just depends if we actually pick him up now or later. Uh, and we do end up picking him up now. In the next shop, we get a bunch more. So we could think of doing like a Bruiser start. You're not forced into Astrals at this point. You're never forced into Astral at any point in your life, actually. But from the start, you can consider going like a Bruiser plus X. But one thing to consider is the items we have right now. So, okay, let's do the Augments first. So if you do Swift Shot, it could be something like an Infinity Edge with a Rage Blade. Uh, you could do Personal Training to try to stack stuff up. Uh, Earth Grab Bag, I like that one a bunch for Mages because you could get a Mage Spatula, which is obviously really useful. And then we get those guys there, and then we drop in the Astrals here. The reason why I wanted to go Astrals this game is not because of the champions we were getting. It's actually because of the items. One of the best item combos you could get on Lux is Jeweled Gauntlet plus Infinity Edge. And before we had the Augment show up, we had a sword, a glove, and a rod. So we already had three of the four components that we needed. So it's a very good thing to kind of have in your back pocket there. Um like as an option for a comp. In fact, most mage comps, it's probably like the highest damage build. But again, you're still not forced into this. You could go stuff like Dragon Mancer Lee Sin or any other AP comp because the, these items just hit really, really hard. But since I like playing Astrals, it's definitely something to consider still. Since we also had the Astral Champion starts. And here's when we get a lot more Astral, so I'm like, okay. Now I'm leaning much more into the comp, even though we don't have any Luxes yet, just because the level ups, the early level ups really help with getting the better Astral Orbs, which is something to consider in every game. But then I see this person with a Seraphine 2 star already. I know he has three of a kind or three's, three's company is what the Augment's called, but that's still nutty to get more copies of Seraphine. That's actually disgusting, but uh, luckily for us, Seraphine is not a carry champion, so she's not going to completely dominate the game. Also, this person did not build any items, so that really helped us out too for this win. We get the Lux, so that is goodbye to Kaisa. Uh, you could complete this Malphite too. We'd probably play him in the next round if we don't get a mage, uh, but there is a mage of the Lilia in our shop, so we probably would prefer having that instead, so we don't really need the Malphite. At the same time, we're not really missing any interest, right? So you could buy the Malphite and no one would be angry at you because it's not really changing the outcome of the game. Uh, okay, this person has scoped weapons, no items, so we should win this one. You could also consider pre-leveling here. Uh, pre-leveling isn't the most important thing to do in this composition because you kind of do want a bunch of the one-cost units, but it's not bad either because pre-leveling does give you higher odds of getting Lux, which is who you care about the most. So you could do either or in that scenario. That is a Silas with a Negatron. That is pretty good. Another thing that's good is getting mana regeneration because again, as we talked about before, you want damage, healing, and damage amplification such as attack speed or mana regeneration in the case of casters. Uh, so getting the tier is really good. Also, we do need a tier for the mage cap which is definitely what we're going to be playing this game. We get another Nidalee. We have a Luxon shop. Uh, all right, I guess we... Wait, what happened to our Lilia? Oh, our Lilia's right there. I'm blind. I actually opted to go for the Namzi. Pretty sure that is a mistake. I don't think I should be doing that because mage capping Skarner, he's probably one of the worst mage cap holders. You just kind of put it on him because he's a leftover unit from the Astral build, but I'm pretty sure he's one of the worst holders of it of all time. Obviously you're saving the mage cap for Aurelian soul, so it doesn't really matter who you put it on as long as you get rid of it later on. Uh, so you could do that by just selling Skarner because sometimes you don't three star him or getting an item remover later on. 
Um, but I probably should not have played the Namzi. The Malphite 2 plus the Lilia, definitely much stronger. It's like not even close how much stronger it is. Uh, so we get a couple more champions here. We have the Skarner downstairs. Uh, so I sell the Namzi, drop the mages back in. We get a Nidalee. So we're back to chilling. The mistake I made last round, it isn't like the biggest mistake. We probably would have lost that round anyways. Uh, but it's still something you shouldn't be doing, you know? This person's also going Astrals, but with Rich Get Richer. For some reason, they only have 40 gold, though. I guess that makes sense, right? They didn't level up either. Okay, no, it does make sense. They have, like, 30 more gold than us. Um, I thought it was a little higher, though. I have to double-check that math. We get a new shop. We get Skarner 2, which is huge. And we also get a Silas, which is definitely what we want. So, yeah. I end up selling that right away. Mage Cap on Barris much better because his double cast is insanely strong. Um, the reason why his cast is strong is because he does like an actual ability where a Skarner just shields himself. So it's really not that good to have the Skarner thing. Uh, we get a Dragon which is worth 7 gold for us so that's not bad. And we get a Chain Vest which is really really good because we need defensive items. So I think I'm just going to slam this Titan's Resolve right now because... We don't have much use for the bow. You could build a Giant Slayer, but that's only if we get some form of mana regeneration on our Augment, but you can't really bank on that. So I'm actually going to do something weird here. I'm going to level up early. The reason why is because if we go back a bit, we had 37 gold. So it takes 16 gold to level up, so we only really lose one gold worth of interest. So leveling up, what does that give us? It gives us more Astral units. Astral units gives us better shops from the orbs, or sorry, better loot from the orbs. So while we do lose one gold worth of interest, how much are we actually losing if we gain that gold back from having a better astral shop? Or from the extra health that we're going to get because we have six units in our team. Unluckily for us, we're facing a guy who also leveled up to level six. So I consider this, or I'm marking this down in the book as just hashtag unlucky and her luck's Barely didn't kill the backline. Maybe we could still win, though, if she gets another cast off. Um, but generally, you'd face someone who's level 5 here, so you preserve a lot more health. And, yeah, I guess we still did preserve health, but it's just a round we probably should have won if we faced literally anyone else. But let's get into our augments. We have Earth Grab Bag 2, High Roller, and Level Up. I'm pretty sure it's High Roller here. You don't want Level Up if you're doing Astrals, unless you're going purely for Aurelian Soul. The spatula one, we'd have too many spatulas if we did it that way. Um, so I'm about to make a major mistake here, if I remember correctly. I'm going to use my loaded dice before rolling down. Because they're always... I've done this before when I have this many units. You could just get a Lux 3 at this point without needing to roll at all. But I didn't get the best um, loaded dice shops. But again, like I should have rolled beforehand. Uh, the thing is, like, I didn't have much gold in this game, so let's say I rolled down five more times, which is how much gold I have here. I probably would not have hit everything I wanted anyways, just because I didn't have enough money to buy every unit in my shop. But it's just, but still, it is a mistake. Like, I should have rolled down before I got everything. And now I'm getting, like, kind of screwed over because I have, I'm getting bench screwed, right? I have to sell the Vladimirs in order to buy everything. We're really close to Lux and Italy, but we're just not quite there yet. Maybe I could have waited until stage 3-5 to use the loaded dice. It's just really rough because you're down a prismatic until that point. But I guess even now I'm still down a prismatic. So I definitely should have waited until maybe stage 3-5, roll down a little bit. And then once I'm at around 20 or like 15 gold, that's when you use the loaded dice. Uh, or whenever you're like really close to getting a Lux. The average expected Luxes to show up in your shop is around one if you use it on Varus, Lux, Nidalee, or Skarner, or Vladimir on this map. Uh, because this map, we have Mage Namzi in our game, which makes it a little worse, I believe. So we really can only expect one sh Lux per shop according to the math. So once you are at six Luxes, maybe that's when you could start using the loaded dice on your units. So either when you're at six Luxes or when you have like 15 gold left so you could buy everything in your shop. Uh, let's see what we get here. Uh, I would say we want either the mana regeneration item from a tier or some tank item. Either or is fine because uh, we have pretty much our team set up. 
Uh, since we do have perfect Lux items, maybe the mana regeneration has a bit more value. So if you have suboptimal damage items, let's say you have like just plain AP items and nothing like really that special, then the value of those items become a little less. Uh, so then you don't need the mana regeneration as much, so then you'd focus on tank items instead. But since we do have pretty much perfect Lux items, we just need a Spear of Shoujin. I think going for the third perfect item is better because it's multiplying a thing that's really good. Um, but we still do need tank items eventually. Tyr could still build a tank item. It builds Protector's Vow and it builds Redemption. So we still have a bunch of options there, worst case scenario. Pretty much every tier item is good in this case. Shoujin's good, Hand of Justice is good, the other two tank items I said were good. Even a Static Shiv is good, unlike our Nidalee or Varus, for example. I'm really trying to think of a bad item from tier. Again, you could slam the blue buff. Blue buff is perfectly fine on Lux. Spira Shoujin is theoretically better. Uh, but blue buff is fine if you just really need to get a third item on Lux. So if we were 46 health, like some of the people in this game are, maybe you slam the blue buff. But since we're at 84, I'm going to hold off a bit. I'm going to be a tiny bit greedy. Uh, we get some good shots there. Unlucky that it's not enough to kill the backline. But soon enough, we should have enough damage once we have the Lux 3. We're getting gold from these astral shops. A little unfortunate. Would much prefer a unit. Um, okay. We get, ooh, our bear's three star. And then we could sell one of these guys to get to the amount of gold. And then we get our Lux three. Very, 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 very nice. So what I'm gonna do, I'm probably gonna wait for my next augment before I decide what item to slam on Lux. You could build the Hand of Justice, you could build the blue buff. They're honestly both really good options. But if I don't have any healing, Sorry, if I do get a healing augment, then for sure I'm going to slam the blue buff. If I don't, then I have to think a little bit. Uh, looking back now, let's say I don't get a healing augment. Probably blue buff is still better because maybe Lux just kills everything before the healing even matters. Are we able to knock out the Zoe though? Nope, we lost to the Ivern. That's a little unlucky because this is the strongest our team's ever going to get apart from Aurelian Soul. Okay, this is a little awkward. I mean, you have to take the Mage Crust, but it's still a little weird. Um, again, since you're going a Mage Comp, if you're not taking Mage Crust, it is a little funky, right? Um, but who do we put this on? Probably we do have to end up dropping it on the Skarner now. But it's kind of nice, right? Because now we get up to five Mages, we get an AP boost for our Lux. Or I guess I could level up, drop it on Zyra. That's another thing I can do. We are facing, I believe this person's going some sort of guild comp. Uh, maybe going for like Zaya guild, it looks like. Uh, but no Zayas yet, but he does have a bard, which is really nice because bard gives you increased shop odds for all the expensive units. So that's really fortunate for this guy. Not so fortunate for me. Luckily, we're able to win the round still. So we get a bunch more gold from the next astral orb. We could get Silas 3, but like we're really far from it. It's not really worth kind of sacrificing your game for. I really want to level up to get Aurelian Soul and Zoe into my team. Especially since we have the Mage Cap, it's just like super, 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 super good. All right, this is a Lee Sin comp. Lee Sin's like, hmm, it's kind of a weird thing because like you really don't care about any champion other than Lee Sin. So when you're stuck at one star Lee Sin, it's just like not looking so good for your team, but I'm sure once he hits it, it's gonna be pretty decent because he has blue battery, which is insane on Lee Sin. But we could get a third mage spatula. At that point, is it trolling? Do you have too many spatulas? <laughs> it's probably belt here for redemption, but if you're trolling like me, then you go for the spatula. Uh, that's me, I'm, I'm the troll. So we get a glove, not what we're looking for there. At this point, you have to put the Mage Cap on the Skarner, and then we're just gonna Thieves Gloves our random unit. We'll just get the third item for Lux off this dragon thing. Um, we are at seven Mages now. I did drop in Talia and leveled up. Uh, is seven Mages great? I mean, it gives a lot of ability power, so it's definitely not bad, especially since we have damage amplification from Critical Strike. Makes the AP literally exponentially better. Uh, well, not literally, but like, almost literally actually okay scratch that part it makes our lux like a lot better because it essentially just amplifies all the ability power that she gets from the mage trait 
And since we don't have any AP from items, I would much prefer having this IE Jeweled Gauntlet compared to the double Archangel staff that we had last game. It's mainly just because the damage from ability power is just additive. Um, but if you add critical strike and ability power mixed together, it ends up being a lot more because um, they multiply together. But wow, we almost one tap that Deja, end up cleaning it up on the second hit. So if we do get just a little bit more power on her, she should be able to one tap a lot of these backliners. Uh, we have 74 health right now going into stage five. Notice how compared to the last game, we hit Lux a lot earlier. I get it. We had, um, what's it called? Loaded dice. So that definitely helped a lot, but we hit it like one whole stage before we hit it the other time. So it, it is something to consider. Oh man, is this hand address is good enough? I don't think so. I'm really looking for some sort of mana regeneration item or a tank item. But uh, Shroud is a little cringe, but this is really tough. Okay, we get a Spear of Shodan here. I think we take this one because Titan's Vow, it's a doable tank item. It's not like your first choice, but it's definitely doable. So we're going to swap out the Zyra for the Bard, Titans on Silas, and then Shojin on Lux. One tank item, and then we're also going to roll down a bit as well, because we probably don't want to run this one-star Talia on our team. Um, another thing to consider with this comp is that you really want tankiness from like a ZZ Rob portal, because again, solo tank Silas is just not the best thing in the world, because he's just a three-cost unit. Everyone else is running like a, look at this guy, like two-star Hecarim. Uh, which is a four cost, right? So it's definitely a lot more powerful than your usual three star, or sorry, three cost Silas. Um, so having additional tanks through like ZZRot portal is a lot more valuable than actual tank items because tank items buff up the champion, right? But since your champion isn't that special, just getting the ZZRot value is more than enough. We're able to beat that guy anyways, though. Let's see what we get from this orb. A lot of gold. Um... Okay, I guess we roll down a bit. We could do Soraka. Soraka with mage buff is pretty funny. I end up swapping it, selling the Skarner, and then uh, just putting the mage cap on Soraka. I know we lose the mage buff. We're down from seven to six mages. Uh, but I feel like it's not like that, that bad. Because Soraka is just like a really good unit. Just watch her heal our team because she makes our team a little bit more tanky, which is what we needed before. Um, from what I was saying the other time. Also, we don't have any healing item on our Lux, so it definitely helps in that department as well. Um, also, we just get life, so that's also nothing to com complain about either. We're facing the Lee Sin guy again. Notice how two-star Lee Sin is just infinitely better than, than one-star. and He just kicked my entire team. That is disgusting. All right, more gold from this Astral thing. We can't get Aurelian Soul because we don't have enough stars on our astral units um but it's not the end of the world now we have to decide who's better bard or soraka and then to that we say neither because we got our aurelian soul so we drop him in put the mage cap on and now we are pretty much in business it's funny because we're gonna end up putting this mage cap back onto the skarner which is a little ironic if you ask me Right, so this person, he's running the Fimble Winter thing. This extra armor, you want to save it because we could get items from the Astral guys. Um, we also want to think about item removing our Aurelian Soul, sorry, our Lux, because once we get Asol 2, uh, you're talking about a legendary dragon that's two-starred versus a reroll two-cost unit. It's just a big power gap, so Aurelian Soul is definitely much, 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 much more powerful. So later on in the game, once I get him to 2-star, you definitely will want to swap into that. Uh, Chalice is really good. I like Chalice. It buffs up ability power, and you guys know how I love it. And you guys know how much I love it on mages, because mages cast twice, so you essentially get double the benefit from ability power there. It's probably the best support item for them. You could put it on Aesol, but again, I want to kind of save the items, so Varus might be the holder for this. So normally, I would roll 50 gold here. There's actually like a decent chance of getting Aurelian Soul 2 by rolling 50 gold, but again, you have to look at our health points. In some other games, we were lower health, right? So we rolled a bit earlier, but in this game, we're at 69 health right now, 
So we want to actually hold on. We could take a couple more losses before we actually do an all in to find our Aurelian Soul 2 star. So we end up seeing him in our next shop. So a lot of times I always say to you guys like, oh, you have to recognize which games you could go first place in, which games you should kind of play for top four in. This is one of the games you want to play for first in because we won a lot of rounds with our Lux three star. So what you want to do after that is try to find a way to win because you don't get many of these games like in most of the most of the time when you play TFT. Uh, one thing to note, we had to sell our level two Vladimir in order to level up to level nine. And level nine is very, very important because we get our seven mages back and we get to play Zoe. So a lot of times I see people leveling without any purpose. They're doing it just because a guide told them to. And that's not the right way to play. So you always want to level up if you could either take advantage of the leveling odds for getting better shops, or if you could add in an extra unit or an extra synergy. Zoe is the best support unit in the game if you have mages. And we were missing one mage because we were at six mages because we have all these mage caps. So it was kind of a no-brainer to level up and put the Zoe in, even if it messed up our astral shops. Another option you could have done was roll down until you hit Aesol 2 star. And that's just because we had two copies of him and there was a pretty high chance to hit it if we rolled down. Uh, so we get Zoe here. Let's roll down a bit just because it's stage six right now. After stage six, Econ becomes like very not important. So always keep that in mind. I don't really need any of these legendary units. Okay, we got our Zoe too. That's really nice. Uh, we don't really need the Astrals either. Like, do I want to play Skarner, Vladimir, Nidalee? Probably not, but I, I should definitely buy this Zoe. I'll figure out the Skarner stuff later on. But who would we put the Mage Cap on? I guess just Soraka? Hmm. Not really too sure. Um, but yeah, no Aurelian Soul 2, so that's a little unfortunate, but we should get it in due time. And then really just look at this Zoe. Holy cow, it's just like the big invulnerability shield. Especially when we don't have tanks. Zoe is essentially our tank unit. Or like our secondary tank unit. Okay, nothing we want here. We'll roll down a bit more. Yeah, I mean, level one Skarner, level one Vlad. It's like kind of troll to be playing them right now, right? Even if we get good astral stuff, it's like, like, is it really that important? I, I probably should sell them. I know I kept them in in this game, but I definitely should have sold them for Soraka and Bard. They just really don't do anything. They give me traits, which is nice. I get more AP from it, but Bard gives me AoE CC and Soraka gives me tankiness, which is really good because uh, Soraka targets like the lowest health ally, I believe. And so that just means you get the most value from her heal. Like none of it is wasted is what I'm trying to say. Can this Silas actually kill us? Is our win streak over? Are they going to get us off of 69 HP once and for all? I believe they will because I don't think the Zoe has enough power to do this. Holy cow, Aesol just completely smurfed without any items, or with only Mage Cap. Where is this Aesol 2 though? Okay, we got a bunch more gold. Donkey roll again. Nothing, 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 nothing. We get another Bard though. So Bard 2 is obviously better than this garbage we have up here, but... I'm pretty sure Bard 1, Soraka 1 is also still better. Again, the like ability power. Oh, I, I know I griefed the Chalice on my Nidalee, but it's okay. Uh, we still got it to hit our Zoe, so it's not that bad. But I probably wanted to double buff my Lux with the Chalice. Um, we're able to beat this guy. He's Olaf 3 star. Uh, but it is a Ghost Board, so Ghost Boards are a little easier to fight. And now we're into a 1v1 situation. So what item do we want here? Probably mana regeneration to put on our Zoe, or you could go for the Zephyr if you're like uh, that type of player. ZZ Rot wouldn't have been bad either, but it's a little late in the game for that item to be good. But now we finally swap out our team. We're gonna get rid of Astrals and Mages uh, in order to just play random legendary units. I think I'll put the Mage Cap. I've heard Mage Cap Yasuo is really good because he gets his AoE much faster, but I think the better item combination I could have done here was Shojin on the Zoe, uh, Mage Cap on the Soraka, 
and then Thieves Gloves on the Yasuo. That's probably the better item combo here than what I did. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. And I should have item removed the Lux in order to put the items on Aurelian Soul. Uh, do we end up winning this round? It's kind of close because this Pantheon's a little scary. Uh, no, we end up winning. That's pretty good there. So we need to beat him maybe one or two more times before we finish the game. He's at 31 health. There's another Yasuo. Um, yeah, I think I realized it now. I don't want the Mage Cap on the Yasuo. And I could also run other stuff that's not Yasuo too. For example, I could, should probably run like another Soraka, but I guess Yasuo does have pretty good, what's it called? AOECC, which is nice for my team. Uh, this extra Shoujin, it might be better on Varus. He has CC, and that's what we need from our team right now. I think I moved my Silas back. Maybe he had a Zephyr or something. Yeah, he did have a Zephyr. It goes on Asol, but you guys will see. Remember how Lux was still winning the other fights, but it just wasn't as convincing? This Asol got uh, Zephyr, and like he just comes in and just blows everything up. Again, it's about noticing like power differences between like different tiers of units. Like two star dragon, the unit costs uh, 24 gold. It's eight times three, right? The Lux, it costs nine times two, which is 18 gold. Nothing to scoff at because again, you have to roll a lot for it. But comparing a two star, but comparing a three star two cost unit to a two star legendary dragon is just not very comparable. So like switching it is kind of a no brainer there. Um, but yeah, this game was a little weird. I'll admit that I misplayed the Lotus dice by a lot. And then later on, I should have replaced the random one star astral units much earlier. And also don't troll like I did. I got way too many mage caps this game. Uh, one or two is probably the most you ever need. You don't need three of them. So I probably should have just gotten like a tank item or something like that um, at that one point in the game before. But at least this game was fun. So let's go on into game number six. All right, we are into our last and final game of Astrals. This is a game that's in Diamond. In Diamond, you definitely have everyone who's like doing all the leveling guides, doing all the meta compositions, things of that nature, uh, which is fine, right? Uh, and they're all doing it much better than the gold players, much better than the platinum players. But again, still not perfect. They're still not doing everything at the same exact time that they're supposed to do it. Maybe they do it like one round too late. Maybe they do it one round too early, uh, things of that nature. But we're actually going to grab the Vladimir's here, sell the Volibear. I don't really think Volibear is quite meta at this point in the game. And until that happens, it's pretty much just a worthless unit. So you always sell that in the beginning uh, if you have the option to. Uh, but we get a bunch of good stuff here. We have a pair of Leonas that we could consider using. We have a Cavalier start that I might actually go into. Uh, but we get... A Lux here and we have our Nidalee so we could go ahead and buy that and do the Astral Start as we talked about as usual. Uh, one thing that's weird in this game is we only got two item components. Uh, we'll talk about that more later but Luden's Echo if you're going Astral you have to get that one it's one of the best augments in the game but if you're playing for serious here because I'm gonna pause for a moment. We have attack speed items we have a guild crest option right here we have Sejuani's what comp is screaming out to you from that? It is going to be a Guild Zaya comp because Guild Zaya is the best item you could have on Zaya. And it's a no brainer because we have a good start for that here with the items with everything set up. But I'm an Astral player, so I'm going to be playing Astral and that's perfectly okay too. So we're going to sell our board, pick up all the Astral units, sell everything else. And we could level up, but we don't really have anything to put in. So maybe we Econ. We are one gold off from leveling up while keeping 10 gold after selling everything, uh, but unfortunately not enough, so we stay at level three. And now we're kind of just chilling after that. Again, even with weird starts, even when the game tells you to go into a different direction, you could still force your comp, you could still get to diamond doing all that. And I'm gonna admit it, I played this astral comp in a meta where astral was not very good either. It was barely B tier. It, it's, it was arguably C tier. I think right now in the current patch, it might be around maybe like B plus, A minus, somewhere around there. Uh, maybe A minus. Let me actually check on my meta snapshot at bunnymuffins.lol slash meta. 
So to do that, I'd go to bunnymuffins.lol, click the meta snapshot, and oh, Astral's are in low A tier. Um, so yeah, right now they're like even better than when I played them before uh, when I made this video. So again, it goes to show that you don't need to have or you don't need to play high tier comps in order to climb in TFT. You could climb like all the way to, if you only play like B and C tier comps, you could probably get to Grandmaster. Probably can't get Challenger playing C tier comps, but you could probably get to Grandmaster. I'm not gonna subject myself to that because unless it's a really fun C tier comp, it's like, um, it's just not worth the effort, you know? But again, it goes to show you, if you like certain compositions and they're at least B tier, like they're definitely playable and you could get to like most of the ranks that you want to get to. Uh, you just have to play with like good principles and all that good stuff. Um, so again here, like obviously it was going for Guild Zaya. Zaya, I believe in the tier list I showed you was the very best comp. And sometimes you just skip it because you want to play only one comp. I'm not saying that Luden's Echo is bad on Astrals, it's obviously one of the best augments on Astrals, but the fact that Astrals just aren't that great makes the comp a little bit harder to kind of force. The good news is, is when a comp isn't that meta, TFT is a game that kind of balances itself. If something isn't popular, not many people are gonna play it, so it should be easier to get the champions, and sometimes you could use that to your advantage. Uh, on this game here, we got the Varus off the carousel. He has a tier. We mainly took it for the tier, but we're going to keep Varus on our board to get to 5 Astral. Um, it just helps with more ability power. We don't have mages quite yet. Mages would be a better thing to put in, but you know, since we don't have it yet, we didn't really have a choice, but it's fine to play him for a round, but we will end up selling him because we want the tier item on our Lux. So we get a bunch of Astral units, both from the orb and the shop, so that's pretty good. Unfortunately, it doesn't upgrade anything quite yet. So we'll kind of just have to chill with this on our bench until we find the, the like, pairs or completions. Oh no, Dragon Mancer Nunu. I hate that composition so much. It. They did nerf it recently, but I still find it annoying because it's just way too good for like what you have to invest into it and obviously early game it's going to destroy most things but maybe later on it falls off because he has hand of justice on him uh, so we get a nidalee we get a vladimir we also got a silas so we'll drop him in too again you don't have to worry about playing astrals during the neutral rounds because you don't get astral orbs at this point in the in the game you only get them after player combats we actually have pretty decent items here. We have a ZZ Rot, that's not bad. We also have a Giant Slayer if we wanted, and we also have a Spear of Shojin if we want that. Um, Chain makes it a little more difficult because we have too much to choose from now. I should probably sell this Varus to get to one extra interest. Uh, keeping him is not the end of the world, but like having mages is pretty important. Here again is where I could level up, go to level six and probably be fine. But compared to the other situation we were in the other game, it's not as worth it because if we did magically win this round, which we do in this case, we end up getting 50 gold. So instead of losing just one gold, like in that other game where we leveled up to level six early, we would have lost two gold in this instance. So it is a little bit of a balancing act there. And luckily in this game, someone was AFK. So I guess that is fine. Holy cow. We got blue buff. We're taking that. Blue buff with Luden's Echo is probably one of the best combos you can get in augments because one of them, you get an effect when you cast, the other one helps you cast faster, so no brainer that it's gonna be a big buff to your team. Here, if you slam Static Shiv or Spear of Shojin, I'd be probably happy with either of them. I definitely should have built an item here. I have no idea why I did not, because both of them are really good for this comp, and it's good to save HP when I'm low, such as 66 life. It's a little unlucky, because this guy hit Rengar 2 and Rel 2, at this point in the game. I know he rolled a little bit, but it's still like a really strong team to try to face with my board right now. So we definitely lose this fight for sure. Not the end of the world, but we are running a little low on health. Uh, one thing to consider again is like slamming items because you don't really need perfect items in this game. And also like Static Shiv is incredibly good. And before we got the blue buff, Spear of Shojin's incredibly good too. So if we slam Spear of Shojin on round three one, 
that would have been really, really nice. We're going to roll because we're above 50 gold. And we see a Nidalee. And nothing else there. So we're facing this person. He has Portable Forge with Mana Zane. I've never seen Mana Zane do that well. But I guess I've been surprised before. Uh, this Jace did get a couple of cast off, so I guess he is a pretty good champion to use it on. Once he gets ability power, that actually could be pretty scary. Uh, but once we get items as well, it should be a lot easier too. Our Lux right now is just zero items, so we don't really have a carry identified. We just have a Sunfire Cape really for our team. So here I opt to get a tier. It allows us to finish two items. If you got the Rod, that would have been fine too. Uh, but whenever you have Luden's Echo... You want to get mana items, so getting more tiers doesn't really hurt. Going back to the items from before, we did slam the Sunfire Cape, but you could have built all sorts of different stuff. You could have built ZZ Rot Portal, you could have built uh, Titan's Resolve. All those items are around equal, but I really wanted to save my offensive items for the Lux, that's why I held off on uh, using those components. Uh, but if you built them, like probably ZZ Rot would have been just as good. Uh, Titan's Resolve, I probably would not have built, but we're going to roll down now because we are low health and we're getting bench screwed, which is a little unlucky. We're one off Vladimir, we're one off Lux after we buy this extra one, and we definitely don't have room for the Silas, but we're also one off of Varus too, so I guess we sell the Vladimir's because he's the least important unit. Ah, never mind. I should have sold the Nidalee. Nidalee's less important. Um, so a little unlucky there. Sometimes you get bench screwed if you don't roll down fast enough. If I rolled down, or if you don't get lucky on your rolls, I mean. Uh, but if I did have more time, I'd probably roll down to 20 or 10 at this point. Just because we're like last place right now. And being at 50 life, if we lost this round and the next round, we potentially could have been at 30, which is not where you want to be. Especially if you're playing like a B tier comp. This is super annoying. We know that that Astral Orb is a champion, but we don't know which one it is. And we saw another Vladimir in our shop, which prevented us from completing it. And because it has two champions in it, we're getting screwed again. It's actually so ridiculous, the RNG of this. And there's our, we would have had Vladimir. <laughs> Unlucky. We'll sell the extra Silas and the Skarner. We're still one off Lux. We're one off Vladimir again for like the 10th time in a row. At least we're hitting our champions though. Uh, we also built the Spear of Shojin on Lux. Even though we have the blue buff, uh, sometimes if you get hit a bit, you gain mana that way. So she could potentially cast in like three auto attacks with the blue buff uh, from the augment. So it's still decent, even though it's not as necessary compared to not having the blue buff. But Spear of Shojin, it gives you 15 mana per auto attack and she has 16 and she has 60 mana. So every four auto attacks, she casts a spell compared to six auto attacks without any items. Uh, but with the blue buff, she only needs 50 mana to cast. So it still takes her four auto attacks to get up to 50 mana. But if you take a little bit of damage, you gain mana that way. So sometimes if she gets hit by an AoE spell, she still could get the benefit from Spear of Shojin. Right, so here we have a lot of interesting items. We could build Ionic Spark. We could build Chalice of Harmony. We could build Archangel Staff. We could still build the Static Ship. We could build Protector's Bow. A lot of different options. So one thing you don't want to do, you don't want to build both Ionic Spark and Static Shiv. Uh, the reason why is because they both do the same thing. They reduce magic resistance. So you, they don't really stack either. Or not either. Not really. Like, like they just don't stack. So I shouldn't say like not really. They just purely don't. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind. I feel like I made a small mistake here. I think I should have built one tank item and one damage item. Instead, I built two tank items, which kind of makes the situation a little bit more awkward. So let's go back a bit. So we have a Negatron, a tier, a bow, a chain, and a rod. If I were to go back in time, I'd probably build an Archangel Staff and a Gargoyle Stone Plate. That probably would have been the better play to do because Silas is pretty much solo tanking. I know we have Vladimir and Skarner up there, but they're not actual real units, so we still have a solo tank. I would prefer having some sort of magic resist reduction in either the Static Shiv or the Ionic Spark, but if we build one of them, the other item combo that we get isn't that great. So here, definitely, I would rather do the Archangels plus the Gargoyle Stone Plate if I had to try again. Going back into the game, we have Celestial Blessing. It's the only option here. Golden Ticket. 
It's a little too late for that. You could reroll, but we do want some healing on our Lux. Let's see what we get from the shop. We get another bow. That doesn't really change our decision making that much. Yeah, healing's good, so I think we just go for that. You could risk it for the biscuit by re-rolling, but like, I don't think in this specific situation it's that worth it because the healing is perfectly fine. Uh, one thing we do need to keep in mind, again, is we do need a Lux item. So on this next carousel, you should be thinking of what you should get. So I think the best damage item for her would be an Archangels. So hopefully we get that. Uh, with the bow, maybe we could build a Giant Slayer out of that so we could get a sword as well. Either of those options would do. Uh, another thing to think about is we have a lot of damage coming from our Luden's Echo. So that gives more value to the magic resist reduction items such as the Ionic Spark and Static Shiv. So having those items is really important whenever you have stuff like Luden's Echo because you're not as reliant on popping people with Lux's one-shot potential uh, because you have a lot of other sources of damage that don't get amplified by items. Uh, so you amplify it in different ways by lowering their magic resistance. Uh, we should think about leveling up to level 7 here. We can't really add that much, but we only lose one gold for it, so it's not a bad trade-off. Alright, we are facing a Graves player. He's got a little bit of funky items, but he- Oh, he's going for dragons. He has late game specialists, so he's not going to be a threat now. He's going to be a threat maybe come 5-1 or 5-2, maybe 5-3, but... Right now we should win this because we have our power spike, we have Lux 3, even though we don't have items for her, like our Silas is pretty strong, and he's essentially down in augment because he has late game specialist, so until he activates that by going level 9, if we don't beat him, something's wrong with the game, right? So as we said before, either the rod or the sword will do. Both of, both of them are like approximately similar value. We could also go for the Zoe. Just because Zoe is really difficult to get because she's a legendary unit and we have an item remover and a reforger, so so we don't have to worry too much about what item is on her. Uh, let's go ahead and pick up this orb. We get another Negatron, so I guess that's an ice cream cone. So we can build a Chalice of Power, drop her in, play four mages. I don't really care that we're even off trait by having four out of five mages because Zoe is just that good of a unit. It's always the awkward time at level 7 for this Astral comp because you're fitting in 5 Astral, 3 Mages, and 2 Bruiser beforehand, so there isn't anything much you add at level 7, so you're really just waiting for level 8, and whatever you put in in the meantime just really doesn't, or isn't going to give you any game-breaking synergy at all. Our Lux missed one of her ultimates, so that's a little unfortunate. Does it affect the outcome of this game? It might have. Uh, we don't even kill the Siphon, that's really silly. Okay, so we're at 41 health, we're in 6th place right now, not the end of the world, but again, would prefer to be in a higher health total, obviously. But we do have our team comp pretty much set. We have everyone starred up, except for Zoe. We have, all we're really missing is items, so as long as we get half decent Lux items in the next, in the next dragon thing, we should be fine. I went ahead and leveled up here for 5 mages because we still had like a semi-clean interval. I would have preferred to be at like maybe 30 gold before I leveled up here. Um, but getting 5 mages in, I guess it isn't like that great looking back at it. It's not horrible though by any means. Um, but if you didn't level up here, I don't think I would be like angry about it if I was like watching you play. Eh, now that I look at it, I'm not sure if leveling up was that great. It's tough to say. It's one or the other ways. Let me know down in the comments which one you would rather do. And also, if you do leave a comment on this video, do be sure to include a timestamp because uh, it's a really long video, obviously, so I might not know exactly which moment you're referring to unless you timestamp it. So, what do we need? We need two Lux items. This Edge of Night is not it. Even though we do get, like, Archangels plus Giant Slayer, uh, this Edge of Night is... Oh, actually, we have a Reforger. See? Me in-game sometimes is smarter than me reviewing the VOD. Uh, do we want to reforge any of the items? So Giant Slayer for sure, Archangels for sure. I guess since I don't like being a cringer, I can reforge this Negatron Cloak because I don't like sweating the Zephyr because it's just very annoying to deal with. Interesting. I wonder... Oh, I wanted another Ice Cream Cone on my... in case I got a tier. But we got an Ice Cream Cone from the Item Reforger anyway, so that's really lucky. 
And then we could just build this second Gargoyle Stone Plate on uh, probably Vladimir because he's three starred. Whenever you three star a unit, you generally want items on them. And then we could sell this Varus, don't need him anymore, make 30. At this point, we're just waiting room for Aesol. We cannot get him from Astral Orbs because we're not starred up enough. So we don't meet the right payoff for the loot tables for getting Aurelian Soul. And for that, you just have to have the loot table up. I'll try to put it on my website, but there are many places you can find it, um, such as on Mortdog's Twitter. But I'll put it on my website because his Twitter, yeah, he tweets a lot. So it like, gets kind of hard to find a bit. So I'll definitely add that in. If I don't put it on the meta snapshot, just comment or like ping me on various social media just to put it in. Uh, okay, so let's see what we get from the orb. Probably just some gold. Oh, we actually get a sword. So some would say maybe I should have greeted the item to see if I get an item from the astral orb, but I think that's a little greedy because it's really late in the game. Health is very, very important. You don't really need perfect stuff anymore, especially since the item I'm going to be putting that on is like some of my trash units that I don't care about. The only units I care about are Silas and Lux and kind of Zoe. If I got like some mana regeneration item on Zoe, that'd be pretty good, like if she had a Shoujin, but that's asking for a little too much at this point in the game. If you end up getting those items, then like Merry Christmas to you. Uh, Christmas came early, but that doesn't happen for most people. So we get an IE here, obviously not what you want to see, but I, I guess we could put it on like Nidalee or something like that. Does it even power up my team that much if she has an Infinity Edge? Let's see how much damage she ends up doing. It's probably not going to be a lot. So even if she had the IE, probably no outcome of any fight would have changed. Our Lux is so close from one tapping, but just not close enough. Yeah, this Nidalee did 176 or 1700 damage. Maybe she would have done like 2300 with the IE. It's probably not going to be that much more. Essentially what I'm waiting for is another item component such as like a Belt or a Zeke's or something like that. Just literally anything to help my team that isn't that garbage. Maybe another Thieves Gloves would be good too. Uh, so what do we want here? We could go for the Trap Claw. QSS is fine too. I'm leaning more towards the Trap Claw because we have a bunch of aura items on our Zoe already. So we already are positioning in a way that makes us vulnerable to stuff like Shroud and Zephyr. Uh, that's one of the counters to all these aura items, by the way, because it's harder to position three units compared to one unit. Uh, so it just maximizes the value of this positioning, so it's kind of a no-brainer to get that. Uh, the other items, they don't really have that big of a use either. I guess you could have gotten QSS for maybe our Vladimir, make him slightly more tanky, but it's really not going to change that much because I, I don't care about Vladimir, as I said before. I really only care about Lux, Silas, and Zoe, and Aurelian Soul once we get him, but... I don't like counting my chickens before they hatch, so I'm not playing around hitting the Aurelian Soul quite yet. So what I mean by that is, I'm not going to go ahead and get Aesol items hoping that I get them because in the late game of TFT, it's a really fast late game. We might be in first place right now with 41 life, but you could lose 20 health in a fight, so we might only have 2 lives if we lose by like a big amount, so you don't really want to play around with greeting too hard whenever you're trying to play for like a first for example and in this situation here playing for a first would be hoping that you hit aurelian soul so we get an infinity edge off this uh rift herald a little unlucky because we have two infinity edges now so that's just going to be sitting on our bench for a while so we're level nine now i'm going to drop into soraka we could roll a little bit and maybe we hit a silas three maybe we hit a varus three don't really care too much about that I'm just gonna keep rolling. By the way, if we did have Varus 3 star, we'd probably put the Infinity Edge on him. Oh, we get Zoe and we get Aesol. Uh, I guess we could pick up the Yasuo, but I decided to skip him. Okay, there's Zoe 2. That is humongous. And now we need to put in this, uh, this little dragon right here. I probably don't need... Uh, maybe take out Skarner. No. Maybe take out Soraka and Lilia, just run four mages. That'd probably be fine. Astral gives like 50 AP, I believe, when you go from five to eight Astral. So it definitely is something worth running, especially since hmm, it's tough to say because most of the mage units kind of suck and most of the Astral units kind of suck. So it's, oh, don't mind if I do. All right, goodbye, Lilia. And hmm, 
do I item remove? I definitely QSS this Ace Soul. So the other game we item removed to put the items on Ace Soul because we had Mage buff. If we don't have Mage buff and we don't have Evoker to get Ace Soul to cast faster, is it worth transferring the items that way? <sighs> that one is really tough. In this game, I didn't think so. But maybe it might have been worth it. I guess this one, let me know your thoughts down below. I ended up not doing it this game, but the other game, it was very obvious to do it since we had the mage buff or the mage cap. Ah, man. Maybe it's worth it. It is it is a dragon compared to a 3-star 2 cost at the end of the day. But if I don't have a Voker, it's a little trickier. Bloodthirster's not bad. Um, I guess I have Celestial Blessing, so it's kind of a dead item. Never mind. But I probably should just build it anyways. How much damage is this Aesol going to end up doing? Let's check at the end of this fight. So he casted once there. He did bop him for quite a bit. Nyla should be dead there, and then we kill the Soam. So Aesol did around like 4,000 damage. So it's not like the most healing he would have done, but it's definitely still something. So here, I think I'm going to go for the Morella Namicon. The reason why I like that over Hat is because he already gets a lot of ability power from the uh, Chalice of Powers. And another thing is... He doesn't, he's not a best in slot Aurelian soul. He has a QSS on him, so that's just not best in slot, right? So whenever you have that, you want to turn him into more of a utility champion. So getting the Morella Namicon on him is pretty decent. And don't ask me why I don't Hextech Gunblade him. Why did I put it on Nidalee? I'm just smoking something that I shouldn't be this game. Um, but I guess we're too far ahead that it doesn't matter because we have 50 gold level 9. I'm going for stuff like Aurelian Soul 3-star at this point. Holy cow, he's got a Soam 3-star. I don't know if we could beat that. I actually forgot if we won this game or not. Did we win because of Zoe? Holy cow. We actually beat Soam. You know what? I know this is the last game, but I need to rewatch that fight because I even forgot that I won this game. How do we win? He's got an Orn item as well, and like, Jeweled Gauntlet. Wow. Did Zoe block a lot of damage? Is that what happened? So Soam's doing his regular cast. What happens on his big cast? Where does... Did he even big cast? Okay, so he did big cast, but it went on like the wrong units, and then I'm not really too sure. If anyone knows exactly how I won this fight, feel free to replay it and stuff, but I guess we're just that much stronger than him. I don't really know. We do have 40 gold still, so like I could have improved my team and lost like a couple of fights since we had 41 health. But again, I think that is kind of irrelevant. Uh, the main point of this video is just to show that you could climb to get to whatever rank you want playing pretty much any comp. At the time of commentating this, Astral's is around A tier as we saw in the meta snapshot, so this comp is just going to be much easier to play now compared to when I actually recorded the gameplay footage. So best of luck out there playing Astral's, and again, if you stuck through this whole time, this whole three hour video, thanks so much for watching, I'm glad you guys enjoyed this, and I hope to see you guys in a future video. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe, and of course smash that like button. Each like is an LP I gain before the next video.